Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. We are going to build Netflix clone using .NET MAUI. So this is the app we are going to build. We have all this menu. We have this main UI menu. We have this main trending movie. We have top rated movies. Then we have Netflix original series. Then we have these action movies we can scroll around we can see other data and all this data is coming from tmdb so we are going to integrate tmdb api in this app and if we click on some movie let's say we click on shazam so it is going to open up a info box which shows the main you know, the release year main thumbnail a short description and all these buttons we can check other as well and after that Shazam we can click on anywhere or details and more to open up the main detail page and in this detail page it will load up the data related to this movie the description and this trailer YouTube trailer then we can run this trailer from here we can see this we can play and pause from here and then we have these two tabs here trailers these are other trailers or other videos related to this and then we have this more like this so this is the kind of similar uh, movies related to this the one we are seeing right now so this is the app we are going to build in this video series so let's get started so i have created this project in .NET 7, .NET MAUI project and I named it Netflix Clone MAUI and I have not done anything, I just simply ran it and I have just copied over a couple of images and these Poppins font so we are going to use this Poppins font so now let's start it so first thing we need to do we need to change this open sense regular font we are going to use this poppins fonts so poppins poppins and then we are going to rename this let's search for it in complete project find all and we have this at couple of places in style.xml file the main style so let's rename it here and we'll name it Poppins regular and Poppins semi bold fine and we are going to rename this Poppins regular time occurrences and then semi bold Open sense semi bold and there is no reference. Okay, fine. So we are good with this. Now, first thing we will check. So we are going to use TMDB API for this data. So for that let's go to tmdb so you can simply search for tmdb some of you might already know about this so this is a, a database of media movies tv series original series so we can get the data for free with of course some limited support and then here i have already created my account you could create your account then you could go to settings and in settings we have this API so you can create API key from here so let me go here and you can simply check all the details you can create API key from here then we are going to use that API key for me this is my API key I'm going to when you will see this video I'm going to revoke this key I'll generate a new key so that you cannot uh, use this API key you will need your API key and then we can see here 
popular we have upcoming trend we can see there are a lot of movies and tv series we are going to use this api next thing is let's install the packages we are going to use in this app so manage nuget packages and we'll use our community toolkit dot mvvm and maui both so first let's install mvvm community toolkit mvvm accept if it's done and next thing is community toolkit maui And after that, Maui, we need this use Maui community toolkit in our Maui program. So here, let's use this. Fine. And now in this, we are going to use HTTP client factory to make HTTP calls to TMDB API. So for that, we need another package and that is called Microsoft Extensions HTTP. Microsoft Extensions HTTP. So this is for using HTTP client factory in our app. And this is also mm -mm. And fine so we have installed all our packages now next thing is let's create couple of folders the so first thing we need services so we'll use we'll create a tmdb service then next folder let's create a models folder then let's create a view models folder and pages folder we are going to have our pages in this and then next is controls we will create reusable controls in this next thing is now this main page let's move this main page to pages folder and let's change the namespace to pages and we'll use this same thing in here dot pages so i think we are good now let's build the application and there is some error it says netflix movie okay in here local so let's remove this and xml ns we'll call it pages and we'll check pages and let's use this pages here okay so let's build it again so build successful so first thing let's create our main tab bar so for that in our app shell.xml file we will create a tab bar and in this tab bar we are going to add our tabs so we could have this like this tab and then this but this app shell.net maui it supports if we have direct shell content uh, children inside this tab bar then it automatically considers these as tabs so we should be good shell content first is home and for this we will use icon so i already added those icons in resources images so we are going to directly use these so for this we have home tab icon this is main page throughout we could have main page only then let's paste it couple of more times then second tab we need that as games 
and the icon is going to be game and let's have this main page one main page two main page three and the third tab it is going to be new and hot so new and hot and for this the icon is going to be brown netflix and the fourth one is going to be our downloads and for this the icon the icon is going to be same download now let's try to run it so our app is here we have all these tabs now first thing is we need so you could see the fonts are already changed now next thing is we need everything in black color because netflix the default theme is uh, black so we'll change everything to black but before that yeah the main thing first thing we will need our um, tmdb data right so before everything let's create a service for tmdb so let's create a class and we name it tmdb service public class tmdb service and we are going to use this the so first thing is we will need a private const string api key so you'll need to generate your api key from tmdb website and then add that key here fine next thing is we will use our http client factory so for that we are going to use i http client factory http client factory and now in this we will uh, raise we will create multiple simultaneous calls so for that we will generate the http client using this http client factory dynamically so for that we can simply register it or we can get it private http client so let's call it http client and we'll get it from http client factory dot create client and now in this create client if you see we have an overloaded method for this which takes a name so this name will uh will create this so let's have a constant here public points string and let's call it http client name only http client name or let's say tmdb http client name and we could name it whatever we want Let's have it as tmdb client and we will use this inside here now the next thing is i made this one api key as private and tmdb http client name as public so i made it public because we need to use this to register our http client factory so let's go to maui program and in our maui program we will simply register it so let's come here we'll say builder dot services dot add http client we will register this and if we see we have these this overload which takes one name and a action delegate to configure this http client so first thing is name we know we have our name in tmdb service dot tmdb http client name and the next thing is 
HTTP client configuration. So we will set this HTTP client and we'll register this. So the thing we are going to register here is we will set the base address. And this base address, this is going to be a new URI. And this is going to be our TMDB URL. And that is HTTPS API dot the movie DB dot org. Hmm. So this is the base address for this. Now we have joined all the PCs. So we are registering this and we are using this inside our TMDB uh, service. So whenever we are going to say create client, it will create a new HTTP client with this configuration. So the base address, it will generate us for us. Now we are in here. So now next thing is we need some URLs. So for those you can try the TMDB API, you can check the URLs from here, you can check the API here, documentation basically, you could check this API reference and we have all these URLs here. So discover Three is the API uh, version. Three slash discover slash movie slash search movie. So there are a lot of APIs you could check. We can check the movies using this URL. This is the base URL we set. Then slash three discover movie TV series. We could find by ID. We could find by genres, and we can get the movie details and so many things from here. Movie details from here similar movies using this API. So all these API we can check. So I have already curated the URLs which we are going to use. So for that, let's create a class here, which we'll call public static class and we'll call this, let's say TMDB URLs. Hmm. So in PMDB URLs, we'll create couple of constants. So public const string, let's have trending. So the base URL we already set and after base, we will use three trending slash all slash this week. So we are going to use these and we will use, we will get all the uh, trending movies and TV series for language E and US. So let me get all the URLs which we are going to use. So we have these URLs for trending, Netflix originals, top rated and action. You could add others as well. You can play around with TMD VP. You can add others. Then I have these static methods to get the trailers, movie details, credits. I don't think we are going to use this credit. So let's remove this and then similar. So for these we need because trailers, movie details and similars, we need a movie ID. So I have created these as these helper utility methods. So for these we'll pass the movie, then we'll generate the URL slash three slash the type this is movie or TV, then movie ID, this is dynamic slash videos and same goes with for all other similar and uh, details about that movie. So these are the all URLs we are going to use in this. Now next thing is we need to get the types. So you could try to send the request to these URLs. So for example, for example, this trending. So let's send a request to this trending endpoint. 
so first thing we have api dot the movie db dot org slash this url and api key equals r api key so let me get my api key and we have this data so we have this data we have this page then we have this results collection which has the details of movies so it has these if this movie is adult or not backdrop path id title this id is tmdb id then title original language original title overview poster path and so many things complete details about that movie then this is the second records guardians of the galaxy volume 3 then others so for these we need types c sharp class types to map these uh, these results to a c sharp classes so for those also i have already generated those classes so let me add those classes let me copy those from off screen and these are all those records all those types we are going to use so we have this movie page results total pages total results so just we saw we are going to use this results so and this result it has all those backdrop path genre ids id original title original name overview all these then we have this media type movie or tv and then for now let's ignore these and we have others as well videos wrapper video movie detail all these genre in this genre so all these types i have generated these already so i'm just pasting it so you don't see me typing all these we are not going to use all these but in order to deserialize the data we are getting from tmdb we need to do this now in result i have added these properties these are not the direct part of this response so that's why i made these read only computed properties so first thing is thumbnail path so for thumbnail path we have poster path or backdrop path so the problem here is sometimes this api it could give us poster path and sometimes this is going to be null so for those cases we are going to use this backdrop path so this thumbnail path we could assume that there will always be a value either from this one or this one then we have this main thumbnail so the thumbnail it actually gives us the direct it does not give us complete url so if we check it in our json link so here you could see backdrop path it gave us this key with dot jpg but the complete url did give it didn't give us right so same goes for this poster path so it gave us this url so we need to generate this url complete so the initial path is this https image tmdb org tp w600 and all this so i have already generated this to so this thumbnail we are going to use this thumbnail because this is the complete image path then we have this small thumbnail we are generating this as well thumbnail url i don't think we are going to use this but let's see then we have display title so to get the title we have these four properties so we'll get it wherever we find the value so it could be from title if title is null it will try to get it from name if name is also null then it will try to get it from original title and if that is also null in that case it will try to get it from original name so all these things okay 
enough talking now let's try to get the uh, data so first thing is let's get the trending movies so for that let's create a method public async task and we'll use enumerable of this is going to give us result because result is the type it returns right it will give us this movie and from movie we will need this results object which is a results array to results let's say get trending and in this we will get our data so we'll say trending equals await and we'll get our http client so it will give us a new http client with the tmdb as base url and now we will use the method which says get from json async so this is kind of shorthand method which does two things for us first thing it get it generates a get request then it deserialize the request so the alternate is going to be we could use the get async or get string async then we can uh, deserialize the response but we are going to use this shorthand so for this first thing we need to tell that what is the type we want it to deserialize the response to which is this one then we'll need to set the url here so url is we have created this tmdb urls class so from here we will use this trending now we need to add our api key to all the requests so we will use this api underscore key equals and now we are going to get our api key so it will give us all trending movies now the type of this trending movies is a movie object but we need result and that we can get from this using or maybe let's call it trending movies collection we return trending movies collections dot results this results is a array of result which can easily be converted to enumerable of results so we have now enumerable enumerable of result so we successfully created a request now let's register this tmdb service to our uh service collection basically so here let's add it at singleton so builder dot services dot add singleton and let's add it like this so i am not using uh, i am not using any interface for this you could use it if you want i am just directly registering the service and now we will use this service directly to test if everything is working we'll use this in our main page so builder dot services dot for that also let's use the add singleton of main page as well and now let's go to main page and in main page we will inject our tmdb service so this is our tmdb service to mdb service and let's call it tmdb service tmdb service and let's override the on appearing method and in here let's have the trending movies or let's call it trending only 
and now we'll use the trending movies dot get trending and let's rename this get trending to get trending async and await it now we have trending movies collection in here public overwrite what is the issue async fine so let's check if we are getting this data on yeah but before that let me add the api key as well so let me copy it from off screen and now let's run it so the app is here let's check if we got data yes in trending we got 20 results and if we expand this we'll see we have dungeons and dragons we have this url for thumbnail if we check this thumbnail and we have all the data right this is media type for this is movie this is an overview poster path so we are getting data that means the linking the connection between our app and tmdb api that is working we are getting the result let's see what is this poster path what this thumbnail url gives us and it is giving us this dungeons and dragons this thing so everything is working so far fine we can continue or we can just stop let's continue the first thing is we need our view model and models so let's go to view models and create a new class let's say home view model and this is going to be a partial class with observable object we are using community toolkit dot mvvm for this fine and for uh, we need netflix originals top rated movies action movies and trending movies fine so first thing let's create models so we have this models class and we'll create a class here and that will be let's say the movie class or media let's call it media because it will have tv uh, web series and movie as well so we'll call it media and this is going to be a kind of subset of this uh, result class so this result is what we are going to get from tmdb api so it is going to have so many things but we'll simply use the thing we need so for now let's copy all these fine and we we'll paste these here and we'll check what all we need so first thing we need our title so we have this display title we are going to use this one so let's remove all of these we don't need all these get set fine so first thing we need display title let's move it to the top then next thing we need media type is it movie or tv so let's rename this as media type next is we need a thumbnail so thumbnail is small and we have these thumbnail url thumbnail small and the actual thumbnail so all these three thumbnails so let's use these and this logic this computed property we are going to have this in result only and then we'll map these from result so let's 
add this get set to put thumbnail we don't need thumbnail then oh we need do we need okay we'll check if we don't need them we'll remove the properties for so now let's have these okay we have display title we have media type we have thumbnails after that yeah we will need id as well so let's have it as id and this id is actually tmdb id so we will need this to fetch some of the details of the movie or tv show and after that another one is we need the overview i guess and release date as well so release date and overview overview is basically a description short description add these here let's rename this to overview poster path we don't need this and then release date released it i think that's all what we need remove these fine we have this media class which we are going to use and now we need an adapter which is going to convert this result yeah this result to our media object okay so we could have it either side but i'm going to have it in result only so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a method here which will return media media object and we'll call it to media object let's see use like this fine so we'll use our media object here and we'll map all the properties one by one the first thing is id it is going to be id and then display title it is going to be display title only same goes media type it will be media type overview overview release date thumbnail thumbnail small thumbnail url and that's all we can remove this media word here yeah fine so we have these two media objects fine now next thing is let's come to get trending async these are the trending movies so it we are returning result from here now we will return media from here right but this results this is an array of result so we need to convert these to our media objects so we can say result to media object fine so we have this result this is the array of results then we are applying simply select and we are converting all the results to media object In this media object we need this so get trending async we are getting this fine <clears throat> we are in media then we are in home view model now we will have our collections here so first thing is we will have a trending okay fine so this for this trending we are going to have this trending as that main uh, main image you if you remember this the app we are building there is one main movie which is trending movie so for that we need only single item and that is going to be of type uh, let's have that as private and media this media and we'll call it trending movie 
and this is going to be an observable property. Hmm. Fine. Next thing is we need couple of other collections. So we'll have our private or we'll let's say public and observable collection of type media and we'll have our top rated movies get set with default and after top rated we will have netflix originals and then we'll have let's say action movies and sim simply action or well, let's call it action movies but it will be having movies and tv web shows action movies and now i think we are good and we can have one more list of trending movies if we want we can have that as well so let's have it similarly movie then this will be trending fine so we have these four collections and one trending movie and i think we are okay with our view model now we need to register our view model so we'll go in maui program and we'll simply register it as singleton this home view model fine and in home view model we'll inject our tmdb service and now we need okay, let's move it to the top we need to fill data for all of these collections so for that let's create a helper method so let's have a public async task and let's call it initialize now we'll get all these data from tmdb so first thing is we'll have uh, let's say trending equals and we have our tmdb service dot get trending async fine and await so we have now trending list we will check if trending list is not equals to null or we can check if trending list dot any if it had some records then we'll simply loop through all the trending items trending list and we'll fill those in this trending trending dot add trending fine and same thing we will repeat for all other but we did not create methods for these in tmdb service so let's create methods first so fine let's this one is top rated get top rated async and for this we'll simply use the top rated ur so if we check this is the only change for all these four right so what we can have we can have a private method private async task which will return the same thing uh, let's say get medias async and we will receive a url hmm. and then we'll do this thing in this method and this url 
let's use this url here fine and now we'll use this method in all of these so for trending we'll simply await on it get media's async and we need to just pass this url that's it and what is the issue here by way this in this thing fine and same thing we can repeat for all other so for the top rated only the url is going to be changed so top rated same thing for netflix originals and same goes for action fine now let's go to our home view model and we'll do the same thing for all others so for example the netflix originals will await on tmdb service dot get netflix originals async and the same thing we we'll check if netflix originals for any is true then we we'll loop through the originals in netflix originals and we we'll add these two netflix originals to add original and we'll repeat this for two more time but as you can see we are doing the same thing right same kind of task we are doing so we could extract this out to a separate helper utility method so let's do this so it is going to be a private async task and one more thing these calls if we'll see this get trending and get netflix originals then get top rated and action movies all these the result of these does not depend on each other so we could have these in parallel manner so instead of directly awaiting those we'll await all of these at the same time at the end fine so what i mean is we'll have something like this netflix originals let's say list then we'll have a top rated list with get top rated missing and then we'll have our action list and here we'll say get action missing fine and now we are awaiting on all of these so we'll not directly await we'll remove this await fine and we'll append because now these are not the direct results these are tasks so we'll have task and then we'll say await all of these returns enumerable of media so we can use where medias equals we can have await task dot when all so in when all we can use all these tasks comma separated or we could have simply created a collection and then we could have added all these four calls to that collection that should also work now let's have it like this only so we'll have this then top rated sorry top rated task here then the last one action list task so if we check it will return a task of enumerable of media object sorry this array because it returns array now this medias it will have the item 
in zero it will have trending in one it will have this for index two it will have this top rated and for index uh, three it will have this action list so we could have now where and trending list so this will be as our medias zero like this then we'll have netflix originals list as medias one then we'll have top rated list it will be medias two and then we'll have our action list it will be medias three so now we have this same data fine now for this thing let's create a helper method so private async task no we don't need task now we'll have private void and set media collection let's call this so in this set, set uh, media collection we need two things first this collection and second what is the observable collection we are going to modify for this one so first thing is we'll have an enumerable of media right let's call it medias and then second one is going to be our observable collection observable collection of media so let's call it collection now we'll simply do this first thing is we'll say collection dot clear we are clearing out the collection if that already has something then we are iterating through media and then we are adding the media to this collection dot add media this is now we are going to use this so it will be set media collection and first one is trending list and we need to add this in trending collection so we'll repeat this four times and we'll remove this so netflix original list top rated list and then action list and for this one we need to modify netflix originals collection for this we need to use top rated collection and for this we need to use action modules. fine so we have all these what it is saying we can convert it to static fine so we have initialized our data we have initialized complete uh, movie list the only thing which is remaining we have all these collections but we need to modify this trending movie as well right so for this trending movie we need this from this trending list collection and for this we could have something like trending equals we will get it from this trending list and let's have it as a mm, random yeah let's have it random right so random trending let's call this and we'll have this as trending list dot order by and we'll say t goes to guid dot new guid so this is simply randomizing the list and then we'll get the first one dot first or default and here we will only get the one which has string dot is null or white space t dot display title so we'll get only the one which has display title because maybe uh, due to some bad data it could be the display title could be null or empty in that case our app 
will not look good so we'll simply check for the record that has both the display title and the thumbnail fine so this is random trending and then we'll set this random trending to our main trending mode trending movie equals this random or we can directly set this setting random trending movie from trending list in the trending fine so i think we have done a lot let's go to our home page let's go to our main page and in main page instead of injecting this tmdb service we don't need this now we'll inject our view model that is our home view model call it home view model let's have it like this and we don't need this we'll set the binding context to this home view model and on appearing we will simply initialize our home view model dot initialize spacing and then we don't need this own counter click and we don't need this counter we don't need this using services we should be good now so now we have this phone appearing and for now let's run the app to check if we are getting the data in this initialization right let's run on counter click error so let's clean the xaml as well let's remove everything because we don't need all of these let's sure app is running and we have this breakpoint so let's add the next breakpoint here continue and now we have this if we check our media's collection it has four items and all of these have these 20 items and now let's trending movies has 20 items numerator all of these let's check display title id and everything we have and now the trending movie we have a trending movie and that is the mandalorian this is of type tv and if we'll check from trending mandalorian was at some other it was not the first one right so we are getting it randomized fine we are getting it randomized okay then we are setting these collections so now if we check action movies has 20 items so all of these collections are getting filled trending movie object is getting filled and we are getting all this data in a kind of parallel manner fine now continue we are going to work on the main page ui first thing we don't need this uh, this navbar so let's remove this navbar hide this navbar basically so navbar is visible false the next thing is we need the background color as black because the theme of netflix is black black and for this thing we'll use a namespace of our view models 
so let's call it view model only and it will be this view model fine and as we already said the binding context to this home view model so let's set the data type of this page as this home view model fine now first thing we need we need scroll view but not on the root level on root level we need a grid and this is because if you remember we had that movie info box so let me pull that up so we have this movie info box this info box so this is uh, we are displaying this so that's why we need a grid with one row and one column and the main row zero, zero, zero column the main ui is on there and then on top of that we have this info box which will be of course be triggered which will be shown only when we click on any of the item from this main ui then only this will be visible so that's why we need a grid here hmm. so for this grid we'll have margin zero and padding zero we don't need anything on this now next thing is we need our main scroll view and this is scroll view we are going to have background color for this as black only now we need to have one vertical stack layout here and in this vertical stack layout let's have another grid hmm. for this grid this is we are designing our main uh, trending movies collection uh, this one this part you see this thing we are going to design this one uh, this image basically so for this we need this grid and let's set a height of this grid let's have it 500 and then in this grid we'll have image so this image will act as a, a background image basically for the main menu and all those so image and for this image let's say a spec at center and the height as 350 and vertical options at start and as you remember for trending movies and for all of those we have the urls as or the images as urls so this is not going to be direct source so this is going to be our URI image source. So in URI image source, we could set a URI and this is going to be a binding of a trending movie dot thumbnail. Trending movie dot thumbnail, fine save it. Uh, yeah we can see it fine now next thing is we need to set or we need to create the these menus and this netflix icon and these basically this icon search box this user icon and then these menus next thing is this so for this let's create inside this grid we will create another grid so this image this is the direct child of this grid that means this but whenever we are going to create anything after this so this image is work as a background image for this so we'll have a grid here again and this grid will have our main menus 
this grid will have our menus so for this let's have a flex layout and this is we are doing it for this thing uh, this TV show movies category so we can see this space between all these so this is space around so we are doing this thing um, so for flex layout we'll have these labels so first label this will be as TV shows and we'll have our style here and this is style we will repeat this style for three items for these three menus uh, this tv shows movies category so it's better to have it as resources on this page so let's have this content page dot resources and we'll create our resource dictionary here and here we'll have style with the target type label and we'll set a key let's say menu label and here we will have couple of setter properties so first thing is the font size we'll have it as slightly bigger 50 and then we'll have font attributes as bold and then we'll have uh, vertical text alignment at center and we'll have text color as white text color as white fine now let's add this style to this so we'll say style static resource and this is going to be our menu label so this thing we are going to repeat this for other menu items as well so let's paste it again paste it second one is our movies and third one is our categories fine so we have these next thing is let's have this flex layout and justify content with space around cool then after this hmm, for this also let's have vertical options at the center now this grid let's design this grid as well so for this grid we will have uh, vertical options at start and let's have margin as zero and for this margin not zero we'll have okay maybe we'll set it later we'll set a height of around 35 for this okay so that means we should have margin so margin left from 0 uh, 35 right we have this height 35 so 35 from top and right 0 and bottom 0 so this 35 this margin we are going to set uh, this Netflix logo and these icons here that's why we have given this space so this is fine and let's uh, fade this image this image so let's have a opacity of something like 0 0.8 yeah fine 
or 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is fine, 0 0.8. Now next thing is, we have this thing now. The next thing we are going to set our main menu. Right, main menu, but before main menu, let's uh, have these my list play and info these icons, these buttons. Let's have these first. Okay, so for these, we'll have after this grid, this first grid, let's have a vertical stack layout. this vertical stack layout we will add mm -hmm. not vertical stack layer we need a horizontal stack layout for these three items fine so horizontal stack layout and in this horizontal stack layout hmm, we'll have uh, we have two options for these two, either we can have a grid with two rows, one column, or we can have a vertical stack layout with first item as this plus and second item as this my list. So let's have vertical stack layout. Vertical stack layout. And here we'll have a label with text plus. And then next thing will have another label which will say the text as my list and we can see this thing is here plus and my list so uh, for labels let's set the color for labels on the global label so we'll go in styles styles and let's find label here this is the label so we have this gray 90 so let's have this as white and white so the default color is white now so we don't need to set the color white and we can remove that color white from here, right? We don't need this one. Okay. Leave this. Okay, maybe because we are not restarting, that's why. Fine. We have this my list, but we don't need this at this place. We need this at the bottom. For that, for this vertical, uh, this horizontal stack layout, let's set the vertical options at end. So it will be at the bottom of this. Hmm. And we need this horizontal stack layout horizontally centered. So we'll set horizontal options at center. Fine. So we have this first vertical stack layout. This is for this my list. This one. Now next thing is this play button and then this info. So let's design this play button. So for this, we'll have a border. And I'm not using button because I need two things here. First is this icon, this play icon, then second thing is this text. So if there was no icon, I can simply use the button in its simplest form. But because we have these two things, that's why I'm having a border which will design this white rounded corner background, this thing. So border and for this border, we'll have a stroke shape as round rectangle with a radius of 5 and we need background color as white and we need 
padding 20 horizontally and 5 vertically and in here we again have the same thing one label and one icon no same thing but yeah two things basically one icon and one label so let's have this first thing we'll set these two things for these also we can have a grid with two columns or we can have a horizontal stack layout with two items so let's have horizontal stack layout first one is image and this is going to be our local image because we have this play icon in our resources so this thing aspect fit and we'll set a height and width 16 so it will look a small icon like this is the play icon and then we'll have a label with text play fine and this play because the default is white so this is in white so for this we'll override this and we'll set it as black play and we need this thing center in center so for that on this horizontal stack layer first thing let's add a spacing five so it will add up space between these two and then let's have vertical options at center center so we have this play text and this should be bold font attributes bold and then font size will make it bigger play fine and between these also we need spacing so for this let's go to the main uh, main this horizontal stack layout so let's add the spacing of somewhat 50 between these fine let's have third item then we'll see how it, is it looking hmm. for these two labels we need these horizontally center so let's have horizontal text alignment at center and let's have this as bold font attributes bold and font size 20 plus and same thing for the second label for the second label let's have a font size of default 14 14 is default so we can skip this but we'll add so we don't need to set anything on this. Let's set this horizontal stack, horizontal text alignment at center. Fine. Play my list. And the next part is this info icon. So this is not icon. We could use one icon here, but the way I have used it, this is simply an ellipse with this i text. So let's use this for this after this border we'll have third item this vertical stack layout so vertical stack layout because we have these two items this i and this thing and then info in this vertical stack layout we'll have a grid here again and this should be horizontally centered so horizontal options at center and in this we'll have an ellipse we could have implemented this using border but i'm using ellipse here so for ellipse we'll have stroke color which is stroke as white this thing you could see very small so let's have some height and width 22 width 22 this thing now we need uh, okay let's 
add that i inside this so we'll have that as a label the text is going to be a small case i this is i here we need this i to be in center horizontally and vertically both so horizontal text options not options text alignment center it's in center and let's have it vertically center as well vertical text alignment at center fine and let's have it with bold font attributes bold fine and let's this uh, stroke thickness let's have a stroke thickness of two fine we have this i and with this i we have a text which says info so after this i after this grid we'll have a label with the text info this one fine hmm. so for this thing we again need horizontal and Hmm. horizontally we need this in center and I think it's okay but the alignment is a bit odd here and why so let's check for this one we have font size as 20 and then my list with no font size this font size 20 20 info and we had did we have some gap in between these two no if we decrease the font size hmm. so for this one maybe we need spacing between these two so on this vertical stack layout let's add a spacing of 15 is there some padding or margin on this margin zero No, not this one. This one we need. Uh, let's add that to this label. Kind of margin top. So margin left zero, bottom right zero, bottom zero. Fine. So we have these three buttons now my list info and play we have these tv shows and all these so for this this looks fine right yeah now next thing is we need to have those uh, the main netflix logo and these icon the user icon and this search icon and the main Netflix logo. So for this, let's have it on the main main grid level. Main grid. So after scroll view, we could have it at top only. No. I had this because I needed that on top of this image that's why let's minimize this and let's have this on this grid level so we'll have another grid for this and this grid will have this height of 35 because if you remember we have this 35 gap from the top so we'll have this as this and 
we need this vertically as the very top so vertical options at start now we'll have a flex layout here we could have this as well as a grid but let's use flex layout and flex layout first thing we need netflix logo and that we have in our resources with what is the name resource images ntlfx underscore logo ntlfx underscore logo so we'll set the aspect respect fit and let's have it at stop and height 30 and width 30. so we have this netflix logo now fine save it and after this netflix logo we need those two icons these two icons search and this user icon so we could have this as one horizontal stack layout with these two items so let's have it as horizontal stack layout and in this for first one let's have an image button the source is going to be a search the png we could have search only and the aspect is aspect fill and the image button is fine we have this image button we need to set height and width for this height request let's use 30 only because we use 30 for this main logo 30 and then width request also 30 we have this 30 and 30 fine now so it looks bigger right let's have it as 20 hmm. this is fine so we need to move this to the right but before that let's have it at vertical options at start as we had this logo so this thing and then let's add a margin top as five so left right zero left right five well, let's have five only from all the directions with me so if we left and right five let's move it to the end and we can have justify content on this flex layout in space between fine we have this here cool after this we need another image button that is that user icon so let's copy this and have this as user Do we have user user right so let me pull that up so i have pasted this user icon and i restarted the app so we can see now another random uh, movie here this rent field and we have these icons so now let's add some a space between these so for this we can add that space on the horizontal stack layout only so let's add a spacing of something like 10 or 15 fine so aspect fit let's have it as aspect fill to make it a little bigger fine and now let's add a small margin from top and bottom as well 
और व्हाट इफ यू मेक दिस सॉरी वर्टिकल ऑप्शंस एट सेंटर देन हाउ वुड इट लुक फाइन दिस लुक्स ग्रेट ओके सो वी हैव दीस थिंग्स नाउ सेव सो नेक्स्ट थिंग इज next thing what we need after this list so for this this is fine now we need all those lists uh, let me pull the image up hmm. next thing we need this top rated originals all these collections right these original section movies trending movies all these collections please like this video share this video and subscribe my channel if you like my content if you see in this image top rated and action these are the width of these uh, these thumbnails it is smaller and the originals the width for this original section this is uh, slightly bigger so we are going to design these it is going to be large and these are going to be normal small so let's continue but before that the this tab bar okay in our app this is in this white color but the final output it should be in slightly this gray kind of color so let's do this first so for this we have let me increase the font size so for this we'll have to go to app shell where we have defined our tab bar here we'll add couple of properties first thing is shell tab bar background color and this is going to be our black and because the black it would not show so we'll have a lighter color so one two one two one two find and then we'll have the if this is in gray color then this should be in white so next thing we'll have our tab bar title color as white and the items which are not selected this color so this is unselected color so we'll set this to shell dot tab bar unselected color so this tab bar title color this is basically for selected icon and this is for all other which are not selected right now so it will have 545455 fine let's rerun the app so app is here and now, and now we can see the colors the tab bar color is updated okay now let's continue to design these this section so because this is repeated on the main page so we are going to create a common user control that is going to be uh, a separate control basically and we'll use that multiple times on this main page okay so let's stop this because we are going to create a new we are going to add a new file so we need to stop debugging then we have this controls folder so we'll create a new control here and we'll call it let's say new dot net maui and it is going to be a content view using xaml and we'll call it let's say movie row movie row and for this we need because all this section we have two options either we can have this heading this top rated originals action as a part of main uh, main page only or we can have this heading as a part of this movie row control only so let's have it as a property bindable property on this movie row control only so it will have uh, one heading then a collection of movies 
and then a flag which would indicate that if this is for these large rows large items or small regular items right so we'll need three properties so let's go to our shell now not shell go to our cs page and here we'll define our define our bindable properties so first thing let's create public static read only bindable property then let's call it adding property okay and we'll create a bindable property dot create and first thing name of the property second let me uh, break it to the next line hmm. first thing is name and the second is type of the property so it is going to be type of string then third one is the declaring type so this is going to be this type only parent of this property basically so movie row and then we'll have a default value so this is going to be a default value of so we'll have a default value as empty so string dot empty and our first property is done then let me copy over this two more times so second property we are going to have our list of movies so let's call these movies only movies property and this is going to be uh, the type of this this is going to be i enumerable of our media object right and this the declaring type is same and the default value we are going to have an empty list so enumerable dot empty media default value then third we are going to have that is large flag so is large and type of bool this is the main type and the default value will have it as false so if we didn't provide any value for this we'll consider it as false fine we have these three bindable properties now we'll create our back properties so we'll have now let's have full property and then this is going to be our this property string this thing and we'll return our main uh, get value method and we'll have movie row dot heading property and this returns a uh, on object so we need to type cast it to string so that's fine now for setting we'll set it set value and heading property and this value fine let me copy this two times and one is movies the type of this is going to be our enumerable of media this thing and fine and then third one is large and this is going to be bool fine so this is going to be is large property and this is going to be our movies property 
find get value movie rules dot movie what happened for oh, movies property heading property heading property fine we have these and let's change these to have so instead of hard coding these we'll use name of so now we have our bindable properties and big properties all set now and now let's go to movie row dot xaml now we'll design uh, this thing this section let's start so first thing we need to have that heading so in this vertical stack layout remove this and okay yeah, yeah so first thing is we need to have background color on this so on vertical stack layout we'll say background color to this uh, black fine now in this we'll have a label and the text is going to be it is going to come from binding and this will be heading which we have on the c-sharp side fine we have this binding and uh, this label text and this is going to be bold so let's add font attributes as bold and let's increase the font size as well so font size 16 and then we need this text to be at the very beginning so let's have horizontal text alignment at start and then we'll add some margin from top and from bottom so from left this is fine so let's have it as 10 from top no not from top from left okay 10 0 0 uh, 10 fine we have this and now next thing we need this collection view so after label let's add a collection view and on this collection view first thing we need to set our item source and that is going to come from binding movies and let's add an items layout for this items layout and this is going to be linear item layout with the orientation as horizontal and let's add item spacing as 5 we'll check it and then next thing is we need to set our item template so in collection view okay, not inside this item layout now collection view dot item layout now we will define our items layout using data template mm, sorry not item layout item template data template 
and for this data template the type of this data template is going to be of our media so for that let's add a namespace and let's call it models have these models now we'll define this model also this media this one fine now we need to have these things so for this we'll have a border because we need this rounded corner design so we'll have a border with a stroke shape as round rectangle with uh, let's say five corner radius then the stroke color we are going to have it as black only because we don't want any uh, other color we want it to blend with the background and then stroke thickness i think this is default but let's have it we'll have our main image now this image hmm so 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 let's have this image first thing is its source and source is going to be come from a url so before source let's set other properties aspect weight and then height and width so this is going to change for hmm, this is going to change for is large and normal um, regular items right so for this we'll have a regular one if we are going to use this then in that case we need to have another property as well so that is going to be yeah public bool and let's say is not large and this is going to be opposite of is large fine now the problem here is whenever this property changes we need to trigger we need to notify change for this is not large as well okay so for this thing we need to have some or would it have this thing automatically let, let's see if it is working first okay so for this height request and width request we need to have this for uh, height request let's say 150 and width request let's have 120 and now for its source we will set a uri image source and the uri we will get it from the binding and now we have this media and in media we have our thumbnail so thumbnail small okay we have this image source so we have this image now and we'll copy it again but before that let's use it for regular so we'll use our is visible property and where here we'll set a binding and this for this we need this from the parent of this collection view so the current binding context this is actually for one item of this movies this media 
but this is uh, is large property this is on this main uh, binding contact so the parent of this collection view item basically so for this we need to get it using the long way so we'll use relative source ancestor type and here the type is going to be this current type all right so the current type this controls so this is inside this controls so let's create another uh, namespace we'll call it as controls and we'll have it as controls and then the type we'll set it as x type and this is going to be this movie row so if this so we'll traverse upward ancestor side and they there whenever we got this movie row type then we'll consider that as binding context binding source and from this type the item we need that is our is not large fine if it is not large then we will display this and if this is large then we will display this thing and here we will say is large and we will uh, increase the height and width so let's say height 200 and width 150 and what is the issue here okay we need a parent for this fine so let's have a grid here without any row or column so this is ready fine this is ready now we need to use this on our main page so let's go to main page here in the scroll view we are going to use these controls so vertical stack layout then this grid and this is start order okay then after this grid <coughs> let's have those controls here so before that let me add the namespace for controls so that i can copy it from here yeah now we'll have it here so controls movie row and heading so first one is this top rated and then next is movies so this movies we can get it from our binding context and this is going to be our top rated movies and then is large so is large is actually false for this so let me break it to the next line is large is false so let me copy this thing couple of times so second thing is originals originals and this is going to be large then third one we have trending right trending is large false and then fourth one action action movies is large false so now let's run the app so app is running and we cannot see any row let me check 
What's wrong? Well, let's check if it is actually working. Okay, so this is working. Okay, it is not able to get the binding context. So let's add the binding context here and let's add a name to this current. Let's have it this only and we'll set this binding context as a reference to this only. Okay, now it's working. Cool. Fine, so we have this top rated, all these movies, then we have these originals and this is large. If you could see this height and width is being uh, more than this top rated and this trend trending section and then we have these action movies. Okay, so this thing is working. Now we need to have, we need to work on this design. So this white thing, this should not be here. Text color, we don't need this. Hmm. And the margin for this heading also, we need to fix it. Okay, so first thing, let's check what is this white background. So on this border, we have this black color. And on this grid we have this hmm. in the stack layout also we had this background color is black only so this border Let's check if this white color is coming from border of where. So let's have a bad background color as black. And this is fine. This was coming from this only. No, and now we need this is not this rounded, right? We have the rounded corners and we don't have these here. Okay. So let's use aspect fill. Fine. Okay. Now we don't need this background color because it is going to stretch out to the, to fill the complete parent. Okay. So aspect fill, aspect fill. Cool. Now we have this section, we have this section ready. The only thing is let's play around with this, uh, this margin on this heading. left, top, right, and bottom. Mm, from bottom, it's lesser, yeah. And from top, let's add more. Okay. Let's have it five. Okay, cool. So we have this top rated section, we have originals, we have trending, so this thing is fine. And the next thing is we are going to work, we are going to have work on our movie info box. So if you see this thing, this small box, so if we click on any of the movie from here, it should open this simple movie info box at this bottom right so 
we are going to work on this okay so first thing let's stop the app because we need to add a new item to solution explorer so we have our controls folder here we will add a new item and this is again going to be a content view dotnet my content view using xaml and let's call it movie info box and this is going to uh, have one property so within this collection within all those these items we have complete movie media detail so we'll pass that detail to this movie info box so that means this movie info box this is going to have one bindable property so let's create that public static read only bindable property and let's call it movie or let's call it media property and we'll create this bindable property dot create and first thing is property name so property name is going to be media and then return type it is going to be of type media this media and then the declaring type the parent of this so this is going to be the current movie info box and then default value so default value we are not going to have any default value so let's have it as null only fine now define the property so of type media and this is going to be media only and forget and set we'll get it from get value and the type of bindable name of bindable property so that is media property movie info box dot media property and the type is going to be media and when we are setting it so we'll say set value and the movie info box dot media property and value so now we are good and now we'll change this to name of this media so this is fine now let's go to its xaml part so for this section we uh, design this section now so first thing let's remove all of this so we'll have one border because we have these rounded corners so we'll have a border here and this border for this border let's have a binding contact similar to in the previous video we have added that to our movie row elements so let's add a namespace to controls and this is going to be our controls this one and let's add a name to this fine now we'll have a binding context as x reference this so now we have this reference to this now next thing is we need to define the border radius for this border so we'll have the stroke stroke shape and this is going to be round rectangle with the let's say 10 but we need this from two sides only from top left and top right we don't need this at the bottom edges so for this we'll have 10 10 
zero and zero. So this is top left. This is top right. This is uh, for these are four bottoms basically. So after that we don't need any uh, thickness for this. So stroke thickness zero, and then this border. Uh, sorry, background color. I have this color already. Two B, two B, two B. This is a uh, the light gray color, and then let's have a margin at zero. Fine. We have this border. Now we'll design this section. So for this section, we can have an vertical a vertical stack layout. In that, we can have this grid as a first item, then this as a second item, then this box view as a third item, and this section as fourth item. So let's add a vertical stack layout, or you could have a grid only to design all of these items. It's up to you how you are uh, envisioning this. So let's add this vertical stack layout, and in this vertical stack layout, first thing is we need to design this thing. So let's have a grid for this with uh, three rows one two three and two columns one column and second column fine so let's create a grid here and now row and column definitions so row definitions three row with auto whatever hide the content needs and then column definitions so for columns uh, first this image so we'll use 120 for this and rest for the second column hmm. and in this grid we'll have a padding of 10 and the spacing between columns is column spacing also 10. Fine. Now first thing for this image for rounded corners we will have a border here. So border and this is going to be grid dot column 0. And as we are planning to have these at 3 rows 1, 2, 3 and this image is going to uh, capture all three rows basically. So we need to set the row span as three. Then let's have height request as 150 and width as we already defined 120. We define the column width here, so we'll use that only 120. And then let's have the spoke shape. This is going to be round rectangle with a radius of 5 and then let's have the stroke, the color basically, the stroke color same as the background which is this one for this border, the parent border, the stroke is this. And we don't need the border to be shown, so we'll say stroke thickness as zero. And I think we are good now, and let's have padding as zero as well. We don't need any padding. And in this, we'll define our image. So for image, first thing we need to have aspect as aspect fill and then height and width same as its parent 150 width as 120 and then the image source for this it will come from an url so image source uri image source and for this we'll have a uri from binding and we have this as media dot thumbnail
okay so we have this we designed this section now before continuing let's okay let's have it on the ui so that we can see it in action so let's go to main page and we have all these items here in scroll view we had this main grid where we had this scroll view and grid this grid is full okay main header then again we'll have this as controls and then movie info box and here we need to have media so for this media what we can do we can have a selected movie or selected media on our view model right so let's go to our view model and our home page view model that is in where is the view model here so we'll have an observable property for private media and let's say selected media observable property and we'll have the selected media set whenever we click often now let's have it we'll bind the commands and events later but for now let's have any movie selected so let's have this trending movie only so after setting all these let's set selected media equals this trending so that we can at least see something go here binding we have our selected media here and now let's run the app so app is here and we can see this ui and it is taking up the complete space and there is this gap so let's add the vertical options to end fine it is at end and after that let's go to moving to box and on the main content view let's have a padding as zero and padding and margin let's have both as zero and then on this border as well let's have padding and margin both as zero so it is coming from where it is coming there is this gap no why is so stroke thickness is zero stroke shape stroke thickness is zero okay let's we have background color also okay let's see we'll check it later but for now let's design this continue the designing so we have this thing and now we need to work on this section the name this cross sign the release date and this description so let's work on this so for this section this first row and second column so let's have it again as a grid as first column for this title and second column as this this button basically so vertical stack layout border after border we'll have a grid and for this grid first thing we'll set grid dot row as zero grid dot column as one and for this grid there is only one row but two columns so we'll have the column definitions 
as uh, star and auto. So whatever space this button is taking, we'll assign rest of the space to the first column to this title of the media. So column definition. Now let's add the label with the text and the default text. Let's set the column grid dot column zero and the text is going to be binding and then binding we have this media dot display title so if let's add a fallback value as well if somehow the display title is not there but no it is it will always be there because we are no 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 for display title for trending movie we check but for display title we didn't check if it is going to be the value with always going to have the value okay so let's have a fallback value something like this uh, movie title okay then font size as let's say 17 and we can see this okay it is coming along and then text color is white already and what is the second thing is this button so let's have this button so grid dot column one and the text i'm having this x mark only and then font size same 17 let's have a background color as lighter color 525252 okay after this let's have vertical options as start fine and then let's have corner radius of something like 10 okay we need to uh, do this as a circle so we'll define height and width for this so, and on the basis of height and width we'll set the corner radius the first thing I requested let's have it 25 with 25 the radius 25 hmm. now the text text it should show the text right but it is not okay so let's have text color white still not showing this and what is the issue here let's have the padding is zero hmm. okay okay it looks fine now so after that the second release date so we'll have this out of this grid and for this thing we are going to have uh, we could have anything we could have okay let's have a label only no we are not going to make it complicated so label and grade dot row one and column one and then text will get it from binding movie sorry media dot release date
this is here this is in the proper format okay and after this we need to have uh, this description so for this description let's have a label again with grid dot row two and grid dot column one and let's have text as binding media dot overview and this is here fine okay we need to have a smaller font size and a lighter color on this release uh, release date so on this release date let's have a font size of 10 and the text color as let me check what is this color so this is 9d Hmm. and then we have this uh, overview so for this overview also let's design this so first thing let's have font size as 10 or 11 and let's define the max lines as 4 Hmm. okay so this thing is here now now next thing we need to work on these buttons so save it okay don't save it now let's continue so for this grid let's collapse this and now let's start working inside this vertical stack layout for this the buttons section so for this one we could have a grid again one two three four with four columns so let's have a grid with column definitions as we'll have equal with columns hmm. and apart from these let's have some margin from top and bottom so margin left zero top 20 right zero and bottom five okay now next thing for these buttons as well let's have these as uh, so we need two things right this the circular background and then this uh, this icon and then this text we need these three things all right so for these three let's create grids only grid and then for these grids we'll have we'll have two rows one for this uh, this icon and second for this text right so let's have row definitions as two and or two so whatever space they need hmm. and this grid from this grid again hmm. one three four then this first item okay we are designing first item so we will say grid dot column zero 
and row definition auto and auto fine and for the first row we'll have this background so let's have an ellipse as row zero column zero so we don't need to specify these or we could specify if we want so for this ellipse let's have a height and width of 25 height width 25 and background colors so for this we have fill and let me check what color is this so this is 3c 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 okay horizontal options at center and vertical options again at center and on the same grid row and column we'll use image and for it we have a play.png file this one and image source part from source let's define height and width as 20 and 20 height and width 20 and aspect and aspect fill of it whatever and for this we need to have this color white color so we'll use community toolkit for defining the behavior for this white color so for that let's add the community toolkit namespace so xml and nice say toolkit for community toolkit Let me pull the browser. Hmm. So we need to have this namespace. And then we can use it as this. Fine. So we have this image and we add this behavior here and the tint color is going to be white. And this is fine. After this, we are going to have uh, we are going to have this text display text so this is going to be a label a simple label label and for this grid dot row is going to be one and the text we have display hmm. Now we need to center it. So first thing, let's have horizontal options at center. Fine. And then let's have a smaller font size as 11. And then the a lighter color. So text color. Uh, let me check what color is it. It is 90. Hmm. So we have this thing ready. Now we just need to replicate it three more times for download my list and share. So instead of this copy pasting these, we could have it as some control or some template or some content view here only. And we can use this from there but for now let's i'm going to have it here only but i can move these styles over to the sources here 
for content view dot resources resource dictionary and let's have this is on ellipse right so let's have a style target type ellipse and key as uh, icon bg icon background basically so let's have the setters here setter property is height request and the value is 25 for this and let me copy it so width request same as 5 then we have fill this color then we have horizontal options at center and then vertical options at center okay and we can set this here the style static resource icon bg okay let's move these thing as well so style and instead of ellipse it will be image let's say icon img and we need height 20 width 20 and aspect fill so height 20 width 20 and then aspect fill hmm. okay we can get rid of these let's add style static resource icon img and now for this label we have these three properties so let's set this as well we'll say icon bt and text so we have these three properties horizontal options as center font size and text color first thing let's remove these from here add style static resource and target type should be label so we'll have icon bt and text and let's add those properties here so first thing horizontal options at center then font size 11 and then text color as this color fine so we have the same design okay now for these three things this grid actually i'm going to copy this over for three times so second one for second we need download icon and download button so download and the uh, image download and grid dot column should be one fine and same thing let's repeat it and the third one it is going to be column two and my list and this should be plus yeah and then fourth one the share icon share and it should be share and column three. okay so we have all these buttons now so all these buttons are ready next thing we need to work on these details and more in this section 
so let's work on this section hmm. first thing this line so this line let's have this line first so for this we can have a box view here with height request as two and the color background color as the same 90 color 90 90 90 and let's have a margin five one zero and after this we need this thing so let's have a grid with three columns one two and three so grid with column definitions as auto star and auto so whatever space the first icon last icon needs and apart from that all space will give it to the second column so this call this grid and now we have first this thing same as this info so we can copy this icon so let's go to main page and on main page let's search for info so we had this grid with this thing so let's come here and copy this grid we have the same thing and on this grid this grid actually column definitions here we'll have a padding of somewhat 15 fine okay and let's move it to left move these to left as well okay fine so we have this i button and after that we need to have these details and more this thing so before that let's have grid dot column the default zero and after this we'll have a label with grid dot column one and the text as these uh, details and more details and more fine so we need spacing between these two so let's add the square only spacing column spacing is 10 5. okay details and more 5 and hmm, that's all for this and next thing let's have this icon this thing so label grid dot column as two and the text as is greater than sign hmm. okay so we have these things ready the color of this this is hmm. This is black, right? This box view, background color. What is this color on background view? Yes. Okay. And why is there some spacing? Padding zero, column spacing. In box view, we have this margin. What about padding? There is no padding, right? With the box, we can't have any uh, child. 
so we have zero here and from this vertical stack layout let's have a padding at zero Okay, we'll check it later. We are going to work on the functionality, the UX, that it should not always be visible on clicking on of this cross icon, it should close. And if we click on any of the thumbnail from this view, it should load up the details from for that particular movie or TV show. So that is what we are going to do in this part. So let's get started and we see this issue so if the name of the movie it is uh, the bigger the string is bigger than it is kind of there should be a spacing from this right side and this text is clipped so we should show this complete text so let's do this i'm running it in non debugging mode so let me run it in debug mode so that we can see the changes directly app is running and we are in movie info box so now the text is smaller so let's retry if you remember we are getting this random uh, a random movie John Wick chapter 4 retry so I'm trying to rerun to again get the lengthy movie title okay so we got it so Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and for margin we'll have one margin uh, in this particular case we are not uh, we cannot see that margin but we'll have it for other cases so in movie info box and the first grade we have image then the second grade we have these two columns yes so first thing on this button let's have a margin of five from all the sides and then on label we'll have character wrap property the line break mode line break mode character wrap and now we can see it so let me save this and <clears throat> it's fine now let's work on the ux making it dynamic so for this first thing we will show this only if let's go to main page if we have the selected media property set right so for that let's go to main page dot xaml or oh, maybe you can't see it now sorry yeah so this movie info box for now we are just showing it always but now we'll add is visible property and we will set it to check if selected media hmm, selected media we have this in here Mm -hmm. so either we can have triggers here or we can simply have one more property boolean property here <clears throat> private bool and we'll say show movie info box and this is going to be an observable property and this will set 
when selected media has been changed or let's have it the full property prop bool sorry property public bool and show movie info box fine and we'll make it computed so it will have if the selected media is not null then we'll have this right and for this we'll set notify property change for as well for this property so name of show movie info box so whenever uh, we are changing this property this will uh, the community toolkit it will trigger change for this property as well because this is going to be changed in that case <clears throat> fine so we are going to use this property in here so binding show movie info box so if this is true then only we'll show this thing so first thing is this now next thing is we'll have to have commands in our main view model to select this selected media right and remove the select media media basically so let's have commands first thing we are going to have private not async private void we'll say select media select media and we'll pass and media object and in this we'll simply select the selected media with this and we'll add relay command to this so that it is going to be converted to command fine and the next one is to remove the selected media right when we click on that close button then it should remove it so yeah this will work in the, that case right so we can have this nullable in that case we'll pass null let's have the default value so we'll pass null and if the value is null then selected media will be null and this selected media we should change the type of this to nullable fine <clears throat> fine so we'll have this when we close it we'll again call the same method with null so it will reset the selected media and i think that's all what we need right now hmm. fine so let's run the app we have this error health kit what is this health kit run so app is here and we are clicking on nothing is happening because we have not implemented anything so let's go to main page.xml and when we click any of the item on this so for that let's okay first thing for oh, this trending is same okay <clears throat> so for this row movie row solution explorers <clears throat> on this movie row we are going to have another property to uh, for this event basically whenever we click on any of the movie we select any of the movie then it should trigger an event so for that we'll have a public event here so public event event handler and let's say media selected or on media selected 
fine on media selected so we are going to trigger this but now we need to pass the information which media we have clicked right so for that let's create an object for event args custom event arc basically so let's call it single or media select event args media select event args and it will be inherited from event args and we'll have a property here which will be of type media let's call it media only and we'll have a constructor here for this fine so we'll use this as a event handler type so let's say media selected fine this looks okay now this media selected we need to trigger this media selected whenever we are uh, selecting any item from here so for that let's go to xaml movie row xaml so we are here and we can have this on the this border because we can click on anywhere on this image so this border this represents a single item so we'll have a gesture handler on this only so let's have a border dot gesture recognizers and we'll say tab gesture recognizer hmm we can have another approach as well so in that approach we could directly uh, access the home view model and then we can simply trigger the command directly from here that new selected command that can also work but we have already started on this path so let's do using this only so we'll have a tapped okay so for this tab okay no because we need that command also uh, that current item as well so tab is not going to work we cannot pass items to this so we need command only okay so let's check how we have registered home view model is it uh, singleton is scoped or transient so it should be singleton or scoped so home view model is singleton that means we will get the same instance so let's go here and in this movie row we'll inject our home view model fine Mm -hmm. now also we have a problem the problem is we need to have this uh, on movie row on collection view on vertical stack layout the binding context is this we need to get Hmm. Uh, let me think about it. Okay, so I cannot think of any other solution right now. So let's do using the existing approach we are doing. Not let's not inject this. Let's not add this. And we'll have a command here only. So we'll define a custom command and then we are going to uh, use the custom command here okay so for that let's have uh, public 
i command and let's call it media details command media details command with get and private set hmm. and then we'll have we need to register this in here we'll say new command and then action we need to execute so let's create a private method here private void execute media details command and we are going to have an object parameter here <clears throat> okay and then let's use this inside here fine Move media details command is ready and in this although we know this parameter is always going to be a media but still let's check it so if parameter is media media and this media is not null this media object is not null if that's the case then we will say uh, we will call let's remove this we'll invoke this media selected command so we'll say this invoke with object sender this and media selected event args so selected event args media fine we have this thing ready uh, let's stop it mm -hmm. so this is ready now we need to invoke this from our main home page right this media selected we have this thing ready so let's go to uh, on movie row we are going to use this so tap gesture recognizer and here we'll say command and this command we need to get it from its parent so let me copy this thing and then from movie row the command name is media details command and then command parameter is going to be complete media so which is the current item so let me have it dot fine so when we click on this it will trigger this command or from here we will trigger this media selected media selected event and now we need to have an event handler on our main page so let's go to main page and here movie row we can have that media selected event here and now on media selected okay now we need to have this converted as event but okay the short solution could be let's add an event handler here movie row dot media selected and we can execute the command on this home view model directly from here right so we could say home view model dot uh, select media command dot execute and this requires media 
and that we can get from this e so we'll get e dot media fine and this thing we can repeat it for all other rows as well copy paste copy paste and copy paste fine so now we can have this let's try to run it app is here let's try yes show redemption and let's sweet tooth and things are working now right if we click on these things things are working this movie info box is modifying the details now if we click on the same item again we need to close this box so if we click on it again it should close this movie info box so let's do this and before that let's uh, remove the default value as well so for this let's go to our main home view model and from home view model when we were initializing we were setting this thing right so we don't need this now we added this just to uh, design this ui so that it should be always on the top and we can see the changes and now next thing we need to see we need to check if we are selecting the same media again in that case we'll kind of toggle the change right so here let's see in this command we'll check if if media is not null if that's the case then we'll check if uh, media dot id is equals equals the current selected media dot id selected media dot id that means we have clicked not selected selected media dot id that means we clicked on the same movie again in that case we'll set this media to null so that it will set it to null and eventually it, it will remove this item from me right so let's rerun that so app is here and this time that is not automatically opened and there is some issue yes for the first time selected media will be null Hmm. So let's add an L check here. Continue. Okay, the app is here. Now let's try. Yes. Next one, next one. Guardians of the Galaxy. And if we click on it again, okay, it got removed, right? Evil Dead Rise. If we click on it again, it is closing. So things are working. Only thing is, if we click on this cancel button, it should also close this movie info box, right? So let's, we already have the event ready, right? But, oh, this is coming from the info box. So go to info box and from info box, info box, okay. So let's add this. Let's follow the same approach we followed for this clicking on this. So movie info box dot XML. Let's add one event here. So public event event handler and uh, not media changed. We don't need any argument here because we know that we are simply closing it. So we'll say it. Uh, info box closed. Okay, info box closed. 
and let's follow the same approach let's have a command and infobox closed command infobox closed command or let's have it closed only closed command execute closed command we don't need any of uh, any parameter here and from here we will simply invoke this with this end event args as empty fine what is the issue i command does not have invoke okay so next thing closed command equals to new command and here we'll add this name fine let me stop this for now closed command dot invoke what is the issue oh sorry info box closed so let's name it closed only closed invoke with this fine and we need to uh, trigger this from here Uh, where is the close button? Display title, then button this. So here we'll say command and we'll get it from close. Fine. And now on the main page, here we'll have that closed movie info box closed and from movie info box closed we can do the same thing with null this time because we are closing it so that's fine i guess let's run it app is coming okay let's open these items we click on it again so it got closed and if we click on this nothing is happening and why so let's check if our breakpoint is getting hit so movie info box execute close command let's add a breakpoint here then in home page the main page let's add a breakpoint here as well okay now let's check and the command is not triggering and why is it not triggering based on single on closed we have this on home view model we have this what is the issue closed binding closed command we go to this closed command we have this closed command and in this closed command we have this closed command right new command everything is fine let me check what is the issue i am not able to figure out what the issue is it should work actually so maybe i'm missing something i'm not sure so if you guys know about it what the issue is here what am i missing please do let me know in the comments and for now let's see if normal events 
are working if we could get it working using normal event so i'm using button clicked event and let's use this uh this event handler from here let's run so app is running and now okay it came continue and it got closed so this is working now okay so this functionality is working we can click on it we can click on other items so the info box content is being updated and if we click on the same thing twice it got closed so this toggle effect and then we can these two lines also working fine and we can close it so this thing is working and now let's open the box on clicking off this main image as well so yeah let's work on this so we'll open it using this main image and this info button on clicking on both of these so let's go to main page and on main page we have the main image so this trending image so we can have image dot gesture recognizers tab gesture recognizer and we'll say command and the command is select media command and movie info box i added command right yeah command is clear okay select media command and the command parameter it will be binding trending movie same thing let me add on info info button this one so let me copy this and where is this info ellipses and this i and info this vertical stack layout let's add this on vertical stack layout vertical stack layout dot gesture recognizer and this thing let's run it okay app is here and we can see avatar the way of water and yes things are working now fine now let's continue and in this part first thing we are going to implement this categories menu and when we click on this categories it should open a, a modal pop-up from the bottom so and in that we are going to show the list of all the let's say genres or maybe we can have some yeah maybe let's have the genres list here fine so for that first we need to create a page so let's create a page a new item find new page new item and we add a dot net maui content page dot net maui content page using xaml and let's call it categories page and it's here and next thing let's add a routing 
in app shell. Let's add this to routing, so routing dot register route and string route, so name of category page, categories page, type of categories page. Fine. And now when we click on the categories uh, menu, then it should open up this page. So let's do this. So hmm, we can have it in our view model or we can have it as a simple event here. So let's have it as an event. So here we we'll add a label gesture recognizer and we'll have a tab gesture recognizer let's change it to the name of this to categories tapped or let's say categories menu tapped and let's check okay it is changed fine and here we'll make it async because we are going to use an async method from shell dot current dot go to async and here we need to add the url and that is name of categories page so we should be good now it should open up this page so let's run the app Okay, so the app is here. So when we clicked on this categories page, we have this categories page. So this is working. Now we will change the appearance of this to modal. So for that, let's go to categories page.xaml. And now we'll do all our core uh, changes of this one. So first thing, let's say shell dot presentation mode, it should be modal animated and we don't need this title now, save it, let's try it, okay we need to rerun it. But before rerunning it, we want uh, the background to be as transparent. Fine, so let's rerun the app. Okay, the app is here. And you can see this welcome to .NET Mori. This is coming to this mobile, this game. You see this thing. Okay, now let's change this vertical stack. We don't need this vertical stack layout. We need a grid here. And in this grid, first thing, we'll have a box view with color as black. is black and now the opacity 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 yeah it's fine or 0 0.9 hmm. okay now next thing we need to show a list of uh, the categories basically and for now we'll display zone rush here and after that we are going to have a cross button here to close this model so first thing collection view and after that button so collection view we'll do it 
in a moment but before that let's add a button and the text is going to be this cross and the vertical options and and horizontal options at center now let's design this so first thing we need to have it uh, in circular shape so for that let's have width of 50 height of 50 and then corner radius as 50 fine then next thing the background color let's have it as white and the text color as black and the font size let's have it somewhat 20 or 25 okay now the padding zero okay font attributes bold okay hmm. and let's have a slight margin let's have 10 from all the sides fine now we'll add a shadow effect to this for that let's add shadow and then the shadow the color brush is going to be black in the offset let's have 10 10 and radius uh, 40 opacity 1 that is default okay this offset is it doing something okay. so let's have it red color so that we can see if it is yes this is doing something and 13, 14, 18. Zero is fine, right? Fine. Zero is fine. What about this one? Minus 10. Okay, this looks nice. Oh, maybe let's have red color. It is looking good. okay so this is here and when we click on this button it should close this model right so for that uh, same either we can have a command or we can use the event so for now let's use click event and we'll rename it to uh, close button clicked close button click fine and we'll change it to a sync and we'll use await shell dot current dot go to async and we'll go one level top from where we came to this space we'll go there okay let's run it app is here and we can see this and we can close this using this button right so it is working as expected fine now we need to show a list of the categories so for that let's go to this categories and we can have a few uh, yeah, one view model here. So let's create a view model. Okay. 
let's go to view models folder and create a new view model here uh, categories view model fine and this is going to be public partial plus observable object observable object and here we will have a list of categories string list of categories so we can have a public property here of public observable collection observable collection of the string and we'll call this let's say categories hmm. and we'll load these the same way we loaded the uh, the data for the main page so we'll have an initialize method public async task initialize async and here we'll fill the values for these categories so for that we need to get the genres but before that we'll insert two values two hard coded values so let's do that hard coded values thing in construct hmm. So we'll say categories equals new observable collection categories and we can add a list of strings here. So we'll add two items here. And first one is going to be uh, my list. And the second one is going to be, uh, let's say downloads. Hmm. Okay. And now let's, in this thing, we modify this to have other zone was list. So for that, we need to check our TMDB service. Uh, let's go to our service, TMDB service. And do we have URL for genres? No, right? Mm, but we should be having a type for genres. Video, movie detail, production, production countries, spoken language. Yeah, this one ID and name and this genre. So we need to have a URL for this. So let me check what is the URL for genres. Okay, so for genres, we can have. Three, number, movie, list. and language in US. And with this, no, we don't need this. So maybe we, this is for movie, and if we change this to TV, then it should give TV also. Movie genres. TV genres. I don't know if this URL is going to work, but ideally it should work. Fine. Let's pull the data for these two. So, we'll create a method here. So public async task of genre 
enumerable. What Zumba let's call this that Zumba spacing. Here we'll make two calls, two HTTP calls. So first is let's say movie Zumba task. Or we could have task dot write all the first task and the first task is going to be uh, this call http client get from json async and this is going to be zomba and the url is going to be urls tmdb urls dot ruby zombas and then the second one tv zombas so this will return us our Problems will pass. Okay, this is going to be enumerable of this, enumerable of this, and this is going to be enumerable of this array. So we'll say genres array equals await this, and now we will uh, convert. The values from this genres array to a list. So basically, what we are going to do, we'll do genres dot array dot select many. So and genres. So we need the complete items, right? It is enumerable. So we we'll say genres. And this is going to return as an enumerable. So we'll return this from here. Right? So let's change it to just G, G, and let's add this in parameter here in a variable here. And then return this zone. Return. return to fine and now we can use this thing in our category model right so we'll say for each where genre in the we need to inject our tmdb service and then we'll use that await pmdb service dot get zone was basic fine and now we'll add this genre name to categories dot add genre dot name and we should be good now we need to use this category view model we need to use this in categories page. So we are on categories page. Let's add this view model. Let's add namespace categories view model. And Hmm. So okay. Now here is the thing we can get it in on appearing the async version of this. we'll say categories view model dot uh, 
dot initialize is sync. We'll await it. In main page also we did this in on a pin, right? For this it was fine, but for this I don't think it is fine because these things are not going to change. Okay, for now let's have it like this only and then we can implement some uh, logic to catch the results. Fine, we have this and on this page we'll set finding context to this and this for category view model only. Okay, now let's go here and we we'll add the namespaces. So first thing, let's say view models. So it is view models. Let's add the data type for this. So the data type is for this, this view model is the data type for this page. So X data type, and this is categories view model. Fine. Now here we create a collection view with item source as binding categories. And then we'll have our item layout linear items layout with orientation as vertical which is default we added this just to have the item spacing let's have it something like five and then we'll add uh, item template data template with data type this is going to be hmm, this is going to be string the name of the category is string only right so here we have a label with the text as binding dot the same name and then let's see how it is looking save everything and run that okay so app is running now if we click on categories we are getting an error that is no parameterless constructor okay fine because we did not edit category page and category view model to the dependency container. Yes, yeah, so we'll do this builder dot services dot add singleton categories page and yeah, we can do this. So using this. Yeah, let's have this single term the categories view model and categories page. Stop and run. So the app is here. Let's open categories and we have these categories with some errors. Generic and numerable one, genre part one. There is some error. Let's check. So these lines, let's check what is the issue here. Hmm. So to check what's the issue, we should check the values for these. So let's say G1 and we'll have this first line. And instead of get from JSON async, we'll have it as get async with await. We are just trying to debug what is the issue. That's why we are doing this. Same thing, but before that, 
to Excel uh, where G1 response this is going to be G1 dot content dot read as string async. Now wait and same thing let's do this for the second one so two and this should be TV view. Let's put a breakpoint here and we'll check what is the issue. Get a sync, get a sync, and fine. Let's run. Okay, it's here. Let's click on categories. We are here. F10, F10 in G1. Okay. And here we got the result. So, Raj, we have these 18 items. And all these are ID and the name. Okay, TV movies. Genre should be same. Okay, that this you are in. This is also 200. And then again, we got the data. 18 Western World Miller TV movie. Oh, the values are exactly same, right? Action, adventure, animation. Action, adventure, animation. Okay, the values are same. So let's do this instead we'll use one line only and we'll do this I'll wait this thing and we don't need this Fine. So we can remove this second line. We are not using this. Fine. Let's read on that. Okay. It's here. We clicked on categories. We hit the breakpoint. And there is some issue. We just checked, right? The JSON will be converted. The items are in some other. Okay, maybe the same way for movie also. It was results array in a movie object, right? Okay, I missed that. that. Let me first copy this, then this, put a break from here. Let's rerun. Apps here, categories, G1R, and JSON visualizer. Okay, we have this in an array with the name of drone bars. This is the string with drone bars. Okay. Stop. Control Z. Not control Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. And then we have, we don't need this. We'll have a wrapper around him. Right. So, Okay, it is a sugar wrapper. So we'll have this as this sugar wrapper. Dot. 
Fine, now it should work. Okay, the app is here now. Let's click on categories and we have this list of categories. Fine. Okay, let's design this. Categories page, fine. This label. First thing, we need to move this to center. For example, text alignment center. And the next thing is, uh, let's add a spacing between these. Let's say 50. Fine. And let's increase the font size. Let's have it somewhat 15. Fifteen. Okay. And now we need a uh, margin so that this list goes on top of this uh, close icon, right? For so that, we need to add margin on this collection view. So let's add it. Margin. Zero and from top also, let's add some margin. Zero, 30, zero, and then 50. This, the height for this is 50 and margin is 10, right? 60. So we need at least 60 plus 30, 90. Now, This is from 90. What if we don't use 90? Well, let's have 50 only. Okay, 90. Fine. So we have this list. So this thing is working now. We are getting this data dynamically and we can close it. And open it again and we'll have it here again because we are getting this in. So, okay, so let's implement a, before we wrap up this video, let's implement this. Categories view model, this categories list, and hmm. so let's have a private I numerable genre, and let's call it genre list. Right. The non generic of prime hmm. So, on initialize async, we'll check if if this has values then. If this is null, then we load data to this and that is going to come from here. And here we will reset this. Categories equals yeah, it got repeated, right? Because it added this. So first we need to clear this and then add these two items to this. So for this, we can remove this from here then because we'll always add this. Category is called add. First one is my list and second one is terminals. And then we can remove this. So we can then 
initialize it here only and now we should do good fine because we have registered it as singleton so it is going to have items in this journal list after the first time right so if we put a breakpoint in tmdb service get shown drive it should hit only once let's rerun so app is here let's try if we are getting the values breakpoint hit tmdb service we continued it we have complete data we closed it we open it again and this time we have complete data but the breakpoint did not hit like that means we are not getting it this time from the tmdb api so we are getting it from this view model only so now we have this data alternatively you could have it in uh, maybe sql database or because this is a non-sensitive small set of data you could store it in uh, preferences also if you want it's up to you how you envision it how you implement it and now the next thing we are going to work on uh, that is this detail page so this page basically so we, if we click on here or play or anywhere on this thing so it will open up a new page with this so we'll fetch the trailer youtube trailer and then we'll have one web view and in that web view we are going to run that trailer then we'll have these buttons these details and then we'll have this these two uh, tab like structures so trailers and more so if we found other videos related to do this we'll list them here and more like this so we'll get a list of similar movies or series all this data will come from the tmdb api only so this is what we are going to work next so let's get started so first thing we need to move to the next page so for that we'll simply go to our main page on the main page we should go to our control so the movie info box control right we have all this data here and we have this movie info box xaml here fine so when we click uh, let's say anywhere in this section we'll move it to the next page so for that let's try to have it on the main border okay so let's have this here so we'll say border dot gesture recognizers tab gesture recognizers and do we have this data in here yes we have this media object here so here let's use tab new event handler and here let's make it a sync and here we'll say await shell dot current Now we need to navigate to that new detail page and which does not exist yet. So let's create that page. So we'll create a new item. .NET MAUI content page XAML. Let's call it details page. Fine, we have this details page here. And next thing we'll do, we'll register the route for this. So for that, let's go to app shell and we'll register that route. We'll say details page so that we can navigate to this page. And we need to get some data 
the details of the movie we clicked from that movie info box we need to get it and in shell navigation we can get it using the query params so for that uh, we can have it here or maybe let's create a view model for this let's create a view model we'll say public class and details view model and it is going to be an observable object and this is going to be partial because we are using this observable object and here again we'll inject this tmdb service so let's create a constructor and let's inject the tmdb service here and and in here first thing we need the details of the movie so we have two options either we get the complete movie details or we get the movie id so now let's have a complete movie details so we'll create a property here this is going to be of type media because we have that media and let's call it media only and we'll add the query property here and the name name of this is going to be our media object media property and the same query id is also going to be media so first one is what we are going to map it and this is from what so basically the second parameter is the query string name and the first parameter is the name of the property fine so we have this object here and now let's move it to another file separate file so we have this details view model here now let's register it to our dependency container so we have all these registration here so we can register it as transient because there is no point of storing it in the memory for always so add transient details view model and then details page and i think there is some method from community toolkit yeah so we have this as add transient with shell route and it adds a navigable element of the type this to view model type this to respect service collection time like and, and registers a mouse shell route and routing using the value of route as the route okay so that means we can use this if we want like this so first one is going to be view that is details page in our case and second one is going to be view model and that is details view model in our case <clears throat> and then we can set the route and route is going to be name of details page so we can do this and if we are doing this we don't need to register these separately here and we can remove this thing from here it will be taken care by this only let me go here so first thing it registers it service dot add transient it registers these then register shell route t view and if we go to this then it does the same thing routing register route route and this this route will pass name of our details page and type of our details page what we were doing in here this manually so this is being taken care from this thing and if we check this this is same okay so this is also doing the same thing so now we have this ready 
now next thing is we need to register our details view uh, inject our details view model in our page so let's register this let's call it view model only view model and now we have this thing for now let's let's set the binding context of this page to this view model and now next thing is let's first thing let's register the models here uh, these two we don't need controls right we need view model namespace so let's add it here and then next thing we need to set the data type for this page next the data type and this is our details view fine and here for now let's change this text to have binding media dot display title let's try if the, all these things are working fine so we have set up this and from the movie info box we are saying go to async now we need to pass two things first is the route that is name of details page second one is animate true and the third one is parameters so this parameter is going to be the parameter we need to pass from this page to the page we are navigating to that is details page in our case so in details page we are using this view model and in view model we have added this query property so we need to pass this object and the name we are going to use it should match the second parameter right in our case both are name of media so let's do this so we'll come here and we'll set we'll create a parameter here this is going to be a dictionary of string and object and here we'll have only one object which will be name of details page dot media no details page view model dot media details page view model right details view model details view model dot media and the value is going to be the current media we have this current media object here so this thing let's add these parameters here and now we should be good so let's run it and let's check if everything is working then we'll design the page so app is here let's try info box if we click on it we navigate it to details page but we don't have anything maybe because of the color we set the label text color to white on global level so first thing let's go to details page and let's set the page background color to black still we don't have this media dot display title and why so okay this is going to be a private media underscore media observable property fine let's try to rerun app is here let's try this and now we have the name of the movie go back and let's try some other movie shazam and we have the name that means <clears throat> the navigation is working as expected we are navigating to the next page with all the details right so this thing is working now let's try to design this so if we check in our screenshot 
we have this section also as black so let's change this to black as well so we'll go to details page and we'll set shell dot background color to black fine now first thing we need to have this youtube trailer so we are going to run this youtube trailer in a web view so for that first thing we need to have uh, one web view element here so first thing we need to have it scrollable so let's get rid of this vertical stack layout for now so we'll have a scroll view first scroll view and for this scroll view also let's add a background color to black after that we are going to have a grid and we are going to have this grid because we are going to show an activity indicator when uh, the details we are going to fetch from tmdb api so that we can show the activity indicator so that amount of time so because the background is black we'll use activity indicators color is white and then let's move it to the center so vertical options at center and horizontal options at center and then let's have a height and width of 50 fine now let's have the actual elements so we'll have a vertical stack layout here and in vertical stack layout first item we need is this web view this web view so let's add a web view here So first thing let's add a web view control so this web view let's have a name for this because yeah let's try to have first let's set the details the properties for this so first thing is source for this web view the source is going to be the we'll get it from binding media we'll say uh, do we have something like trailer right so let's add a trailer url for this first thing so let's go to this media Okay, details, view model, then we have this media type and in this media we are going to have a trailer URL. So, string and we'll have a trailer URL. Hmm from here we can get this trailer url let's check the tmdb object it is in tmdb service we have this uh, url get trailer so we are going to get the trailers from here and then we'll fetch one of the trailer to show in that web view so let's create a method here public async task and this is going to return us a list of video and from video
structure so let's call it get trailers and in this trailers first thing we need a movie id well let's call it id only and then second thing we are going to get the type the media type basically so that we are getting in other as well so this indicates if this thing is movie or a tv show and because we are dealing in movies more so we'll have a default value of movie with this this thing now let's patch the trailers this trailers will say how fate http client the get from json async and this is going to be our video wrapper with wrapper yeah, i have already defined this in these models so from this videos wrapper first thing we need to pass the url and for the url we can get it from let me move it to the next line we'll get it from our urls dot get trailers and we need to pass the movie id and movie uh, this type let's pass this now we have this url then we need to append the api key like this so now our url is ready now let's have so let's call it wrapper or videos wrapper now next thing is we'll check if this videos wrapper dot we are going to have if you look into this videos wrapper this has an id and a collection of videos this i'll show you what we are going to use this <clears throat> so we have this so we are going to check if we have any result for this so if results dot length if it is greater than zero then we'll do our stuff and if that's not the case we'll simply return null for that we need to add this question mark here because we are saying that this is going to be nullable this can be nullable okay continue hmm. so if the length is zero then we'll check we'll get only the video so how it works this tmdb api for this thing it is going to get all the videos related to this so if you check this thing the url here says videos of this movie so it could be a trailer teaser some movie clips some promotional videos it could be anything related to that particular movie or tv show but we don't need everything we just need trailers so we need to filter out this so for that in videos wrapper and video this videos wrapper i have added this filter trailer and teasers so i'm setting this first thing we are checking if that is official so uh, trailers it could be re-uploaded it could be uh, modified by someone else and they can upload it so we are going to get only the official teaser and trailers then i'm checking if that trailer or teaser has a link of youtube because we are going to use our web view to uh, play that trailer so it must be from youtube only in for our case then third condition says the type of that video it should be teaser or trailer it should be one of these we are going to use only these two types for all other videos promotional short clips or anything we don't want all of those but you can play around with this you can check the type uh, the sample data and then you can check all other types and you can uh, play around with those but we need only these so we have this selector uh, i have added this as expression 
uh, this func so let's do this so here let's call it trailer teasers so we have this videos wrapper dot results dot where and we'll add our selector here that uh, that func delegate here so videos wrapper dot filter trailer teasers so here we are going to get uh, enumerable of video and then we are going to return this return trailer teasers so that is how we are going to get the trailers now let's use this method in our case so let's go to our details view model and here let's have one more property here string and let's say let's call it trailer only or let's call it main trailer and this is going to be an observable property and to fill the value we are going to uh, use the similar approach we followed for our home view model so we had this initialization we are going to follow this approach so we'll have one method and in that method we are going to fill value for that so here also let's have a public async task initialize async okay and here get the data from there so let's call trailers and then we'll await our tmdb service to get the trailers get trailers async okay okay we didn't add async let's add it get trailers async get trailers async and it needs two parameters so first parameter is id that we can get from this media so here we'll say media dot id and the second parameter it requires this type so this will get from media dot type media type fine so now we'll have a list of trailers and from all these trailers now uh, if you remember in our tmdb service this filter delegate it is checking if this video is teaser or trailer both but now we need to show only trailer so we'll first check if this video had some trailer so for that let's check it if trailers or let's say where main trailer or let's say first trailer or let's re rename this to trailer teasers and now we'll say trailer and we'll get these trailer teasers we'll apply first or default and here we'll check if t dot type if this is trailer then only we'll set this so if trailer is not null or let's do the opposite if trailer is null if trailer is not null then we'll simply get the first item from this trailer teaser selection whatever it is in this case it should be teaser only but let's have it first only now we have this trailer after this we'll set our main trailer and let's rename this to main trailer url so it should be main trailer url it is going to be this thing only trailer dot now we need to get the trailer url for this so for this we need to 
create the trailer so what it gives us it simply gives us a key so if we check trailer dot key it gives us this key so if you run any youtube video there is one uh, some alphanumeric values or maybe just alphabetical values only something a x t y d v it could be anything so the youtube key basically youtube video key so we need to generate youtube url from that key so for that let's create a static helper method here so we'll say uh, private static string and let's say generate youtube url and we'll get the youtube key or let's say video key and after this we'll simply generate our uh, youtube url and for that simply say https crocodile youtube.com slash we'll use the embedded uh url so that it we can see the youtube url only in the in that web view nothing else after that we need this video key and that's it so generate this thing so we'll have the main trailer url equals generate youtube url and this is going to be from trailer's key fine after that what if we got null from here for that let's handle it so if this is null or let's check it like this if it had some values then we'll do all this if that's not the case then we should somehow uh, show some alert to user that there is no video or there is no trailer something like that so for that let's do this await shell dot current dot alert shell dot current dot display alert async hmm. in this we need title and title we could say found and message let's say no videos found right and then the cancel button that is going to be okay only and that's all we are going to do from here but it is showing compound i think we are good with this main trailer url now we need to use this main trailer url in our page for that let's go to our detail page where is it it is here so here we'll say main trailer url that is this one okay fine and now let's save it changes app is running let's see we have this and we cannot see anything because we need to set the height and width for this and we need to show and hide this activity indicator so first thing let's come on this web view and we are going to set the height for this so let's have it something like 200 okay or maybe we have it 250 fine hmm. so 
so we save it so this is web view but we are not uh, this main trailer url url this is this does not get loaded yet that is because of in our view model we are loading this on this initialize async method and we are not calling this yet so in here let's override uh, on appearing and in here let's change it to the async version Sync and here we'll say await and our view model dot initialize async. Fine, rebuild and apply changes. This here, let's see. It got loaded, right? But you see, when we move to it. Let's go back, let's use some other Shazam. First, it shows that white screen and nothing and then it loads this. So for that particular amount of time, we should uh, show our activity indicator. So for the, okay, one more thing. Let's remove this details page. Title from here, so we don't need this title. Let's remove this. The second thing, this activity indicator, so we need to have some flag. So let's go to our view model and let's have it something like private rule is running or let's say is this. One. This is very famous in our Northern Maui community. <laughs> we use is busy for all these operations so let's use this observable property and then we set this is busy to true here is busy true and then we'll apply uh, try finally here And we'll set it back to false in our final loop. Is busy false. Fine. Then we'll use this is busy in our details page. For this activity indicator, let's use this for is running. We'll use this finding is busy. And then same thing we need to have here so either we could have uh, another property here that will will call that something like uh, is not busy the opposite of is busy or we can use a uh, trigger on this vertical stack layout so let's try triggers this time so we could say vertical stack layout dot triggers and we we'll use a data trigger here with target type is vertical stack layout this current one and the binding is going to be binding uh, is, is busy and the value is going to be false if that's the case then we'll have a setter. The property is going to be is visible and the value is going to be true. Now let's have it is visible at as false. What is that showing? Fine. So how this is going to work now, the default value is visible false, that means it is false. And how this triggers work, it automatically triggers respond to changes basically. We are saying that this is a data trigger and we are binding it with this is busy. So whenever 
this is busy has a value of false then we are saying set the property is visible of this target which is this one to true so if is busy is false then is visible of this is going to be true and if this is false is busy is false uh, is busy is true then it will not trigger and it will use this default value which is false so this is how it is going to work let's save it rebuild and apply changes so the app is here let's try it the godfather and maybe it is fast okay if it will take some time then maybe it will work but for now we are good we are going to continue on this page so let's get started next we are going to work on this section there should be movie name duration release year these two buttons and then overview or description of that movie then these three buttons mileage rate and share button so this is what we are going to work so let me zoom it so that you can see it properly fine we were on details page so this is our detail page okay here we have initialized the model and in initialization we simply fetched all the trailer teasers all the videos for that particular movie and then we set this main trailer url now next thing we need to have the details of that particular movie so far what all we have we have okay we have all this data trailer url release date overview thumbnail we have all these details right okay so let's release date and overview title we already have overviews description release date release date and duration is missing right okay let's first try to fill out these values then we'll work on the duration let me pull it up so that we can see the design real time media and then detail page detail page okay so we had this web view and after this web view we need all these detail so let's create a vertical stack layout so we'll have a vertical stack layout here in this first thing we need to have our title here so for that we'll have a label with text we'll get from binding media dot display title okay for now let's have it like this only yes we have this on this vertical stack layout let's add a padding of let's say five okay label name let's design it a bit so let's make it bigger font size 18 and font attributes bold fine text color is already white that is fine okay now after this we need to have this release year and duration so for this uh, we could have a grid or horizontal stack layout for these two things so let's have a horizontal stack layout first label with the text we'll get it from binding release year that is from media dot release date
okay we need to have it in some different some lighter color and size is fine but the color should be uh, this light color this gray light gray color let's copy it for now so that uh, we can design this thing and we'll fill out the value later for this duration okay two things let's add a spacing between these two 15 yeah it looks fine and for designing let's because we are going to share it for two labels so let's add it as a resource hmm. we'll have a style here for target type label and let's call it uh, let's say subtitle or just sub here we'll set properties so setter property and text color let's have it uh, value gray and let's copy this and this time let's have font size also a bit smaller than this so something like 12 and let's use this sub on these labels so we'll set style static resource sub same thing on the next label fine after this we need to have this button this play button and then download button so after this horizontal stack layout let's add a button here and on this button first thing let's have a text as play then we'll design this and we need to have some spacing between these so let's add that spacing on this vertical stack layout so we'll have a spacing of let's say 10 okay and now play with this, this button let's design this button so first thing background color we need white then text color we need it as black then corner radius we need to make it a less rounded so let's have something like five or four okay four is okay then the text this font attributes bold it should be bolder okay fine okay it looks nice then the same design we'll use for download we'll simply change the background color and color let's copy this and paste it one more time and this time the text is going to be download and the background color this is going to be gray and the text color we don't need to add it so it will use default white and this is fine and let's add font size as well so let's have something like 16 or at least 15 let's have the same here as well okay now if you will see uh, these three things we could uh, move these to a separate style here so let's have one more style and the target type is going to be button and x e let's 
all these btn only and let's copy these two and in our case we need one more corner radius 4 but we need font size 15 and font attributes bold so font size 15 and font attribute bold and then corner radius 4 so corner radius value is going to be 4 let's use this for our buttons so we can omit these things style static resource btn let's copy this to the second button and we should see the same design okay now next thing is this description so this is overview so let's have one more label here label and the text we are going to get it from our binding media dot overview okay and now let's add let's make the font size smaller 12 let's do it 13 okay it looks okay now next thing we need to have these three buttons so for these let's use a grid with three columns one two three and two rows row number one we'll have these buttons and row number two we'll have these tags or no that is not right because we should con consider this as a single button right so we have two options first thing we need to have grid that is for sure uh, you could do it using some other layout as well maybe flex layout with space between or simple horizontal stack layout with three items so there could be multiple ways but for me let's first thing let's have a grid and for this grid i'm going to have three columns with equal width so three stars and then let's have uh hmm in first one let's have a vertical stack layout only and in this vertical stack layout first one is going to be this plus icon so we have an image for this so image source and that is plus plus why can't i have it do we have plus image we should actually uh, resources images and plus yes we have this plus icon okay we'll check it what is the issue aspect ratio let's say aspect fit and then height and width so let's have these 25 and width also as 25 fine and then we'll have a label with the text uh, my list and we can see this but not image that means image is there but that is not uh, in the white color so for that let's use the tint color behavior so if you are following me we have already used that continue editing fine so let's copy the tint color behavior from our main page first thing we need to have the namespace we have not used it on this one okay. 
But do we use active tint color in this project at all or no? Movie row, movie info box. Yes, we used for this one, movie info box. So for tint color, we are going to add this namespace to our details page. And then we'll simply add the behavior. So let's copy this thing and come here. And here is the image. And tint color plus white. Fine. We have this thing now. Next thing. Let's move this vertical stack layout to the center. So vertical options as center only. And then image which is in center and label. Let's move this to center. So horizontal options. Oh no, not vertical. Horizontal options with center. And horizontal options center. Fine. My list and let's make it bigger. So font size 15. Okay. Looks fine. And let's add font attributes as well. Font attributes bold. Okay. Fine. Now we need to use this same thing for three times for these two uh, buttons as well. So what we could do, we could simply move these things, these properties to separate uh, resource. Let's copy these and let's add the styles, resource styles for these. So style, this time target type is going to be image and key let's say image button imgbtn we could name it whatever we want so let's check what all property we are setting for this image button let's right minimize this 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 we are working on this thing minimize this this and these two buttons, three but label, and then this grid. Fine. So we are using these three properties. Okay. So first thing is aspect. This is aspect fit. Second is height request. Third is width request. And value for these two is 25. Fine. Let's copy this one more time for uh, this text. So let's say uh, BTN text and this uses font size attribute and horizontal options. These three things. So font size 15 font size 15 font attributes bold and horizontal options at center fine and this should be target type label okay img btn and btn text so we'll remove these things so we'll add a style here which will be our static resource imgbtn and the same thing we'll do here style static resource btn text so this is fine now we'll simply copy this thing three times but before that let's add the column the default is zero but still let's have it and let's copy it now 
so copy paste and paste so this is the third one that means row two and this is the second one that means row uh, sorry column number one fine we have these three buttons and the second one text for this one is rate and the third one is share and the icons are share and rate or something else okay so this thing is also set continue editing fine we have this thing now next thing is let's try to have that uh, the duration so for that we'll check our model so if we see media where we are generating this media we are getting this data from all these get media async and this is from this two media object this is from this result and in this result do we have that backdrop of the id of title name overview newspaper release date title name media type and we don't have the duration so that must be in some other Hmm. Original title, overview, popularity, release date, revenue, status, vote count, vote average, runtime. We need this thing. So that means we need to have this movie detail object. And for this movie detail, we need to have uh, get movie details. We need to use this url okay let's do this so we'll add one more method in our tmdb service here let's public async task movie detail get media details okay and this requires movie id and type so let's have an id that is media id and the type and the default value is going to be movie for this and in this we'll try to fetch the data so hmm, is that direct or movie detail movie detail movie detail okay maybe this is direct there is no wrapper for this fine so let's have these uh, details and we'll use our http client dot get from json async and the type is going to be this movie detail and the URL is going to be from our URLs. Copy this. Next line, copy this. And instead of get trailer, we'll use get movie details. Now we this and everything is fine. Now we have details. String type. Now we'll have these movie details and we'll return this directly from here or we could do simply this fine now have we have this movie details and from this movie detail for now we just need runtime nothing else so let's go back to our view model our detail page view model when we are initializing it here so we'll have one more property here so private private string and 
for runtime. What is the type of runtime? Is this string or this is in some other format? So result, videos wrapper, video, and where is runtime? Runtime is integer. Okay, in minutes, I guess. Hmm. Okay, so let's have it runtime and this is going to be an observable property and here when we are initializing it then we'll come here and then we'll say uh, where details equals await tmdb service dot get media details okay it should be async let's stop it get media details async and it needs two parameters one is media dot id and the second one is media dot media type same okay now we'll have these details and now we need to fill first we need to check if we found these details details is not null then we'll set the runtime to this runtime details dot runtime and this is integer r is string so let's change it to integer and now we should be good okay fine we are good now now first thing let's cut it from here and let's have it here now we could have two approaches first thing these two are not dependent on each other so we could uh, make these kind of parallelized for that we can simply will not await these directly here we'll await we'll trigger these requests then we'll await so that is one way but i'm having it inside this because i will request this only if no no yes okay i'll do this only if we have this trailer right but is this the right way no no we should have these in parallel manner only fine so what we'll do we'll simply cut this line from here we'll have it here first thing second thing we'll cut this thing from here and we'll have it here and next thing We'll remove these await from here and let's rename these two trailer teasers task and details task and then after making these two calls then we'll await the results. So we'll say await trailer teasers task. And then second, we'll say details, await details task. So these would run in parallel. So we'll get the results faster in this case. Okay, then if it is not null, we are setting runtime to this runtime and everything looks fine now. The next thing is we need to use this runtime on our details page. Now where we are setting that This thing right this release date so we are going to have runtime here runtime and this is let's run it first app is here let's see the details and we have this right so let's 
let's have some margin from this title as well so this was after web view this vertical stack layout right so let's have a margin zero fifteen zero zero okay and then then this 130 right so we need to format this somehow so this is 130 minutes actually so let's add the format for this so we'll use string format and then we'll simply say zero minutes 130 minutes okay cool go back have some other the godfather part 2 and we have 202 minutes so it is working okay so please like this video share this video and subscribe my channel for more such videos so we are going to design this something a uh, tab like structure so trailers and more and more like this and trailers and more We'll simply show these trailers, all other videos, and for these, uh, more like this, we'll show the similar movie or TV shows on the basis of uh, this current media. We'll get this data from TMDB again. Okay, so you can try maybe some uh, third party tab like structure for this, but I'm going to design a custom. Uh, solution for this so we'll handle the state and all these so this is going to be very naive very uh, layman structure very simple structure so let's continue on this uh, let me minimize this to have this on right side this one here and let's go to our details page fine so we were here and after this second vertical stack layout which holds all this data we'll have a new vertical stack layout and in this first thing we need to have this line so this line uh, there could be multiple ways i'm using a simple box view for this and this box view this is going to have a height of two and after that let's have a label so that we can see it in action so let's have some random text and this is here okay fine so this you see this gray type of line this is this box view and on this vertical stack layout let's have should we have a margin yes let's have a margin Margin topper is this fine? This is fine. Okay, we'll see if we need it. For now, this is okay. We have this, and after that, we need these two uh, labels. We'll consider these simple labels, and then we'll uh, treat these as buttons. So for this, and if you'll check, we have two things here. First, this red indicator. This uh, kind of overline so which indicates the currently selected tab so how we are going to envision this we'll have two separate controls for this this is going to be one box view and this is going to be simple label so this is how we are going to do this so first thing let's have a grid for this Hmm. let's have a grid with row definitions as auto and auto whatever width they can whatever height they can take and then two columns column definitions auto and auto hmm. 
and have some column spacing as well. So let's say 50. Fine. Now the first row and first column will have a vertical stack layout for these two one box view and this uh, this label. So this vertical stack layout. And this is going to be grid dot row zero and grid dot column zero. Fine. And in this we'll have first we'll have a box view with height request of and the color as red and then we'll have a label here with first thing hmm, text let's say this trailers and more so and amp we need to use uh, html like uh, this code for displaying the ampersand so trailers and more we have this here okay and because we need to use the same styling for this one as well so let's do it in a resource style so let's have a style and target type is going to be label and x dot e let's say tab text okay and let's use this first then we'll design it so here we'll add our style which is going to be our static resource as this tab text or let's say tab title tab title fine tab title okay now let's have some setters for this setter property first thing is font size only we need a bigger size so for this let's have something like 15 and then let's make it bold so font attributes bold fine then let's use the text transform we could have directly as uppercase but let's use it as a setter style trailers and more fine and apart from this hmm, we need margin from top side right so let's use margin and zero from left uh, let's say five from top and zero from other two sides so this is fine so we need this thing trailers and more and things are looking okay right now hmm. let's come here and we have this vertical stack layout we have all these we have this vertical stack layout inner part this one and now the next thing is we'll do same thing for this next more like this thing right so let's copy this vertical stack layout and this time column one full and the text it should be more like this okay hmm now this more like 
this this is not selected in the first place so this is not selected for for that we'll use instead of this red color we are using background color as black so we'll use black color to demonstrate that this is not selected currently selected item is this trailer and more okay let's add margin here because this was uh, touching the left wall but we don't need that so okay so five is fine from all four sides okay it looks fine fine now this section so let's have first one collection view for these things so for that after this grid we have two options either we could have this inside this same vertical stack layout or we could have it outside of this vertical stack layout right so it's up to us how we are uh, envisioning it for now let's hide this grid and let's have it inside this only so we'll use one more mm -hmm. add some vertical stack layout or no we don't need it okay let's have it outside of this vertical stack layout here for this we will use uh, it's also up to us what we are going to use so let's have uh, hmm, container for this collection view so let's have a border for this hmm. And for this border, first thing background color which is default black. So let's have it this only. Next thing is we are going to have this collection view here. But before that, let's have a label here text uh, trailers collection view. So can we see this? Okay. So for border let's have a background color as black first thing okay now we don't need this uh, this thing this bo this border around this border control so for that let's have a stroke thickness of zero and fine trailers collection view and let's copy this one more time for is more like this more like this uh, let's say grid so for now this more like this grid so we'll simply for now i'm just trying to uh, implement the tab like structure so when we click on this or the default trailer collection view this should be visible and when we click on this more like this the red indicator from this trailer and mole it should become black and the black one on this more like this it should become red and in that case this trailers collection view should be hidden and this make uh, more like this grid it should should be visible so that is what we are going to do so first thing the second one by default it should be false so is visible false so that is not visible right now okay and we need to do this from a, a c sharp logic so for that let's have some uh, names for all these so first thing on this one let's have a name for this so that we can access these from our uh, Mm -hmm. from our c sharp code okay so first thing no, not on this one we need to change the color of this box view so let's have a name on this one so we'll call it trailers tab indicator trailers tab indicator indicator trailers tab indicator fine and the next one this box view will say let's say 
similar tab indicator fine next thing is on these borders we'll name this to show and hide so x name we'll say trailers uh, tab uh, content trailers tab content and then on this next one second one we'll say similar type content fine now let's do the first save it continue editing hmm. now next thing is let's do the logic so we need to uh, add the events for this for clicking on these two so we don't need commands we are simply playing with the ui so we could have these as simple events so for trailers and more on this label let's have label dot gesture recognizer and we'll use tab gesture recognizer with tabbed event tab gesture recognizer dot tabbed and uh, we could rename it so we'll say trailers no, let's rename it like this trailers tab tab fine trailers tab tab uh, trailers tab tab fine and the similar thing we are going to do with this more like this button so let's say this then label dot gesture recognizers tab gesture recognizer tabbed event fine and then let's go here and rename it to similar tab tabbed fine continue editing and in these we need to access those things so first thing when we are clicking on the mm, the first uh, the first trailers tab so for that say trailers tab so we need to change the indicator so trailer tab indicator dot color we should make the color of this to colors dot uh, red right we need to make it red and the similar tab indicator we need to make that as black Hmm. make that black similar tab indicator and trailers tab indicator to red and same thing a similar thing similar tab content we need to set the visibility of that to false we need to when we are clicking on trailers tab that means we are coming to trailers tab so in this case the similar tab should be hidden we don't want to show similar tab right the more like this tab and here we'll say this to true and we'll do the opposite of this in this next tab right trailers it should become black and visibility should be false and then this thing let's copy it over and it should turn red and the is visible for similar should be true in this case so i guess the basic tab like functionality it should work so let's uh, rebuild and apply changes app is here let's see if the tabs are working 
and yes tabs are working trailers and more default is this when we click on more like this so the red indicator is here and more like this grid this label is visible right so this thing is working now next thing is we need to fill the data for this okay so for trailers collection view this thing so if you remember we have this list of videos or like trailers teasers trailers teasers we have this list right from here we got the first trailers url to display here but all other videos we have right so for that we'll show those videos here so let's in our <coughs> view model let's have an observable collection here so we'll say prop it should be observable collection of type what is the trailer type it is video so video and we'll say let's say videos we'll call these videos only fine and default and after this we'll simply fill out these when we got the data from here right so first we set this main trailer url and after that we'll go one by one add trailer <coughs> or let's say video in trailer teasers and we'll fill the videos dot add video fine so we have this thing now we need to use this in our details page fine so first thing let's come to this first border we'll come here and we'll add our collection view here <coughs> collection view item source we'll get it from our view model that is what was the name of it videos right videos binding videos and then next thing we'll set the designing for this so item template data template and the type of this is going to be uh, do we have the namespace for the tmdb service i have that video type defined in this one right so video and this is in services namespace so let's add the namespace for this xml ns let's call it services and we'll have the services this one yeah so next thing let's use the type video 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 where is video services colon video hmm, this is going to be type and now we need to design this so the this button i have added this so first thing this thumbnail second thing this play button and then third the title of the video these three things we need these three things so for this let's have a grid Hmm. grid with two rows one for this thing and the second row for this text so row definitions first one is going to be 
uh, let's say star hmm. and or let's say have it a fixed height of 250 and the third one is going to be whatever height it takes and column is going to be one only there are no columns right in this next thing is hmm, grid we need to uh, this uh, board we need to use this border radius so for this this corner radius so for this we'll use a border control so let's have border control and this border is going to be in our row zero and the stroke shape it is going to be a round rectangle and let's have the radius 5 next thing inside this border we'll have hmm, an image image and source for this image we are going to get it from the internet basically so we'll on this let's use aspect fill and then image dot source we are using this attached property for this and this image dot source this is going to be uri image source to be explicit we are doing this uri image source and for this uri image source the uri we are going to get it from binding and this thumbnail okay hmm. and now next thing this text but before the text yeah first let's get this text running so we'll use one label with the text binding okay this thumbnail do we have this in videos so in videos what let's go here this videos this video type this video type has this has thumbnail okay this has thumbnail published at official type that key and name we have this name so we need to use this name so binding name fine let's restart the app to see these changes so app is here and we can see these things hmm. we can see these things now we need to design this a bit more so first thing in this border we need some hmm, some padding or margin but not on this border we need this on this grid on this grid let's have a padding of 10 okay it looks okay and the next thing is this stroke thickness this border around this border we need to remove this right so let's remove this we'll use stroke thickness as zero fine the next thing we need this text to be at the bottom okay not bottom it should be in next row right 
so for that we need to move it to the row number one and this is fine hmm. this is fine and let's add some spacing so row spacing five okay it looks okay and i guess everything is fine now right on this thing we just need this button so for this we'll use another border over this border so first thing let's make it uh, the opacity of this lighter to uh, make this uh, something like the, some fading effect 0 0.8 yeah so that it this button uh, look good basically 0 0.8 is fine now next thing let's have the next border for this thing for border this is also going to be in grid dot row 0 only and this is going to be vertically centered and horizontally centered and for this thing hmm, we'll use background color uh, white and inside this we'll use our play button play image this one so let's say image source play we need to have this in center so let's have it in center vertically and horizontally also in center central vertically center and aspect <coughs> aspect fit and we should see it right yes it is here now next thing we need to make the background this white thing we need to make this bigger right and round it bigger and round it okay so for this let's come on this border and let's have a height of 50 and width of 50 okay now next thing we'll have stroke shape and it will be a round rectangle with half of the height and width 25 okay fine okay this is not white right uh, D okay okay so I guess this is fine now let's restart the app once more okay the app is here Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania we can see this all the details are here i can run the trailers and i can see these videos okay fine so these things are working now next thing is we need to work on this more like this this button so first thing we need to get the data from tmdb api so for that let's go to our tmdb service and in tmdb service we have these tmdb urls and we have this get similar url right and it requires the movie id and this type of media 
whether it is movie or TV show. So for this, let's create a new method here. After this, we'll say public async task, and this is going to be same as these thing. So this is, or we can use the same approach, right? We just need to pass the URL. So let's copy this and paste it here. So it will be get similar async. Okay. And to get the URL, we'll use the get similar. And this requires these two things. So let's add these as parameter and then use this. Yeah, let's use this thing. Okay, let's use this complete URL and we'll simply change this to let's move it to the next line so you can see it properly and instead of get movie details we'll use get similar so this is fine now let's stop it and now we need to get this data so if we go to our details view model where we have this initialize async we are getting the all the videos, trailer teasers and details. So after this, we'll have uh, the similar movies. So let's say similar medias, task, and then we'll use TMDB API, TMDB service dot get similar async with this same data same parameters and we are not awaiting it because we don't need its result right now and now we should use it or oh, okay so we can try one thing let's move it out of this try catch because this is busy uh, this is being used to show the activity indicator on the main page but if you look at our ui so we don't need that more like this in the first screen so user might not see that but will not see that of course because it user is going to see this trailer all these details and all these trailers and more and all these videos not this one to see this more like this section user needs to click on it so there is no point of holding this is busy for this thing so what we'll do we'll simply trigger this request and will not await the result of this then we'll set this is busy we'll do all these things which are required for the first visit and then after this finally now we'll await for this similar media. So you could have try catch also for this to handle uh, the exceptions, but for now I'm just having it without those. So we'll await it and now we should be good. Next we need to fill out this. So we'll have one more observable collection and this is going to be of type media and let's call it similar media fine and here we'll check if we have the similar medias dot any if we have some data if this is not null and it had some records then only we'll fill uh, let's say media in similar medias this variable and then this is let's rename it to just similar this observable collection and we we'll add these medias to it so this is fine okay okay so we got this now we need to access this in our 
page so where we have this text more like this grid and if you check this thing I am having these uh, something grid like structure with three rows so for this I am going to use flex layout with these three columns so to divide it in equal three parts we need to have the width of the screen so for that let's go to our details page xaml.cs file and let's have a property here private property private double underscore width right or maybe hmm okay let's because we'll need to access that width property in our xaml page so let's have that property here in our view model so we'll say private int and let's say similar item width and we'll default it to 125 so the 3 becomes 375 and it should be an observable property okay and now we need to fill the actual value to this so for that we will come here details page.xaml.cs and here we don't need this property now we will override a method here override on size allocated so this is the method which uh, has the, the current screen size and uh, the size basically height and width so here we will check if this width is greater than zero that means we got this width then what we will do we will access our view model dot uh, that similar item width and now this width variable uh, this parameter actually this has the complete screens width we need to divide it by three so for that let's do convert dot int 32 width divide by three so now we'll have one third of the screen for one item fine so i think the c sharp side code is done now we need to work on xaml so let's start the app then we'll see the changes in real time so the app is here let's open one of the movie we have this let's come to more like this and we are here now we'll design this so first thing we don't need this label we need a flex layout here so this flex layout We are going to use bindable layout to add those items in this. So for that, let's have bindable layout dot item source. Let me move it here. And we'll get it from our binding and it is going to be this similar. So now we have access to this. Now we'll show the item template for this this is going to be same data template and the type of this is going to be the media object so data type our media object is in models so let's add a namespace for this let's copy one of this okay we'll name it models only models and then data type this is going to be model of this media fine now if you check the actual design it has this uh, slightly rounded corners so to get these rounded corners we are going to use a border again inside this so let's have a border 
and on this border first thing we need to set the stroke shape to round rectangle with 4 and background color of course black then we don't need the border around this so stroke thickness 0 and then height and width so for the first thing let's add a label so that we can see something is happening here anything if we check okay we got this written one two one two one two hmm. that means this is working we got the similar item but text is one two three that's why it is or let's try to have from this media we can have display title right let's see how it looks and we have this data but it is in single line only but we need to break it to the next line whenever it hits the wall of the screen so put that on flex layout we will use wrap property to wrap so it breaks to the next line fine now next thing is on this border let's set height and width for each item so first thing height we can set let's say 120 but in order to get to width this width is going to be this is the width of single item so this is going to be our similar item width from our view model right so but here for this data template the binding context is this thing similar so we need to move forward uh, in upward direction and to get the this page's view model so for that we'll use binding then we'll use a relative source max relative source and then we'll use ancestor type and this is going to be x type and then this will be our view models uh, details view model this one so we are here now and the property we need that is similar item width fine this is okay now let's change this background color thing right so that we can see something okay fine we have this thing next thing let's use the space justify content property on this flex layout so let's use this uh, space between we have this two items but it should have three items because we are using we come here we are using direct divide by three but it has some border and all these so we need to give some breathing space for this so let's minus three from it so that it can get at least the borders from this so let's save it and rerun The app is here. Let's see. More like this. And yes, now we have these items. So let's go back to our XAML. And here on this border, we need to have some. Hmm, some margin from bottom as well right so on this border after width request let's have a margin zero from left zero from top zero from right and let's say five from bottom fine okay we have this thing now after this 
we need to set the image instead of this title we need to set image so instead of this label we'll use an image here and the source is going to be that uri image source and this will get from the binding thumbnail small and we got this let's uh, set the aspect ratio to if we we'll use fit it will kind of stretch out right aspect fit let's use fill so that it takes this complete space and now let's increase the height a bit it is 120 let's use something like 135 and it looks good now see yeah, it looks good so we have these trailers and more we have this more like this section okay so i guess this is fine now this is working now let's change this red color to black again now next thing we need to do when we click any of this movie it should navigate to the, the same page with this new movie because we want to see the details of this particular movie on which we are clicking right so for this hmm, let's have a and come a command on this view model so let's say private async task and let's say change to this media something like this and which media this media and this is going to be a relay command and to this we need to navigate to the same page so we can get it from our movie info box this thing let's copy this details page let's have it in this okay so we are setting this parameter to new dictionary string object type of media and the value media and then we are navigating to this page this page again right now let's use this rebuild and apply changes use this command in our xaml so select food media list details page is ambiguous oh for this details page did I no it created the details page yes Fine, we were here on this details page and I have to add this using, right? Okay, let's run it. App is here. Let's see this time if it works. Guardians of the Galaxy. We have this, more like this. Demon Knight and we got this tales from the crypt demon it fine let's go to more like this young gun second there are no videos found okay this functionality is also working we could not find any video for this but it navigated to this thing so trailers and more will not have anything and more like this is going to have the data broken arrow let's go to this this also does not have any video let's try some more uh, mortal combat this also does not have any video is the functionality working the cave no videos anaconda 
and we have videos that means functionality is working there were no videos found for those movies right so this is working more like this so all functionality and we can play the trailer all functionalities are working so that's pretty much all for this please like this video share this video subscribe my channel and the next i'm going to share you a video series for a blog app full stack blog using blazor server till then bye